meeting is now being recorded and Howard Prater has just joined. Hi, Howard. Hi, I've only joined because I got Marissa's emergency email that she's in the thunderstorm. <laughs> Right now, it seems like it's okay, so you can. All right. If you want, Howard, but I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna sign off then, and then if you need me, I'm here. So just let me give me okay. a shout. I will. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Howard. Thanks, Howard. Okay, uh, I'd like to welcome everybody to tonight's town board meeting, Monday, August 10th, 2020, at 7:09. Uh, if you would all rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, put your hand over your heart, whatever is convenient. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. And I'm sure you sent me the packet, but um, again, due to technical difficulties here, I'm going to work from our agenda, and I'll ask. Uh, if you can go to the website um, under doc, you know, where yeah. all the documents are, there is um, one that you click on for board packets, if that helps. I did resend it again. Thank you. No, I'm sure you did. I appreciate it very much. Um, I'll just uh, work with Michelle. I'm sure she'll walk me through uh, your packet. Okay. Um, so, we have uh, two agenda items. I'll just share that with everybody. We have the first agenda item a resolution to approve reopening plan for Tuxedo Town Hall COVID 19 pandemic. And second one, uh, resolution approving Beckman appraisals proposal for reappraising state lands. Um, we're Michelle, was there anything else? Yeah, we're, we're going to add to that. A, we're starting the meeting by opening the public hearing to receive comments on changes to park rules and regulations, amendments, local law. Do we have do we have a copy of the local law proposed? I haven't seen the final. Marissa, have you sent it? Yeah. Howard sent it last week. I sent it around again, but I only have a red line copy. So hold on. Maybe you could share it. I don't know if I can do that because I am on an iPad. I'm not sure if that's something that I can do. Yeah, unfortunately, my work computer doesn't allow it. We don't have licensing for WebEx on here. Um, so I have to use two different computers. That's why you see me. Hold on, let me see. Maybe I can find it. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll look for it and then I can share it. Okay, yeah, I'm going to send it out to everybody right now. Oh, here we go. Marissa, could you share that with my tuxedo English at gmail.com yeah. as well, please? I, I Thank gotcha. you. Don't worry. Okay. okay, I just resent it to you guys. So hopefully everybody will get that momentarily. The PDF is a red line um, comparing the original version of the park rules and then the word document is just every you know the actual text how it will look um for this public hearing tonight i now see donna's packet she sent me thank you donna so we should who's going to share it somebody should put up the word document i guess the word you want me to put up the word one well that's the one that's that is the the final Theoretically, the final version prior to public comment. If I got that right, Marissa. 
Correct. I'm smart. <laughs> okay, I have it opened. So <clears throat> let me go back to this. Uh, Dave, do you need to give me permission to share? Oh, wait, share. share. You got it? Do you want me to do it? Um, look in. If you have it open, yeah, go right for it. Yeah, anyone can share. I have selected the shell. So. Okay. Jay, can you do that? Can on it. Okay. Here we go. Can everybody okay. see that? Yep. Great. All right. Um, Not yet, but it's loading for me. Okay. Uh, so this is the uh, proposed local law for park rule and regulations amendments. And here we go. Be it enacted by the town board of the town of Tuxedo, Tuxedo County of our state of New York as follows. Section one. Article 2 of chapter 19 of the code of the town of tuxedo entitled park rules and regulations is hereby amended as henceforth read as follows. To henceforth read as follows, sorry. Park use rules and regulations. Section 19 dash 9, the purpose of this article is to regulate the use of the parks. I'm going to paraphrase a little bit where it doesn't seem to matter much. Definitions. The following terms shall have the meanings indicated in this section. Parks are the grounds, buildings therein, water therein, and they have the property necessary for the operation thereof, and constituting a part thereof, which is now or may have to, hereafter be maintained, operated, and controlled by the town of Tuxedo for public park or recreation purposes. A person of any individual, firm, partnership, corporation, or association of persons. The singular number shall include the Plural. Yeah. We'll yeah. Correct so, that. Yeah, Jay. I think that should say should include the plural. I don't. Yeah. And I looked in both, and I don't know why it's not in there. It's not coming up. Um. But I I'll confirm yeah. that. But that that's a de minimis change. Anyway, that's it doesn't the, matter. The usual yeah. language there. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Motorized vehicle. Every vehicle operated or driven either off or on a public highway, which is powered propelled by any power other than muscular power, except electrically driven mobility devices. Assistance devices operated or driven by a person with a disability. The term shall include, but not be limited to cars, trucks, motorcycles, all terrain vehicles, snowmobiles, and the like. For the purposes of this chapter, the term motor vehicle shall exclude police, fire, and ambulance vehicles. Now, here comes the good stuff. Prohibited activities. The following acts are prohibited. A. Parking a motorized vehicle in other than the designated parking locations. No overnight parking of motorized vehicles is permitted in any park. B. Operating a motorized vehicle in excess of five miles per hour or in any manner contrary to posted regulations. C. Operating a motorized vehicle on other than the designated roads or pathways. D. Horseback riding on other than designated roads or pathways. E, allowing a dog to be off leash other than within the designated dog run. F, conducting sports activities, including fishing, in locations other than those designated by the Director of Parks and Recreation. G, entering or using the parks outside of the designated hours. H, failing to comply with the time-sharing plan posted for the use of any recreational facility. I, in the waters of the Ramapo, other than for fishing in DEC designated fishing locations. J, possession, sale, or consumption of alcoholic beverages without a permit from the town board. K, possession, sale, or use of any illegal drug or substance in any town park. L, erection or use of tents without a permit from the town board. M, possession or use of firearms, bow and arrow, or other dangerous weapons within the park, unless authorized by law or by a permit from the town board. 
end, disturbing the peace and good order in the parks by fighting or arguing in loud voices or threatening violence to any person or the property of others. O, begging, hawking, peddling, or soliciting within the park except as authorized by permit from the town board. P, using profane or abusive language while in the parks. Q, injuring, defacing, destroying, or disturbing, or removing any part of the park. R, loitering in or near park restroom buildings. S, littering or leaving behind refuge and garbage except in receptacles provided for such purpose. T, possessing or using propane or other flammable cooking devices or barbecues. U, starting a fire in a park except in park grills, fireplaces, or designated areas. I think there should be a comma there, Marissa, while we're being picky. There no fire shall be left <laughs> unattended. V, failing to extinguish all fires before leaving the park. The dumping of ashes or fire onto the ground is absolutely prohibited. W, golf practice in designated areas. X, failure to follow the instructions or orders of town park employees. Just one comment. Uh, it doesn't uh, T contradict you to some degree, excluding the propane? Um, you can only do it in a in a park specified grill, so you can't bring your own. Gotcha. Thank you. But then again, I'm not the lawyer. I I'm believe not that's sure. correct. We could make it more concrete, though. Um, yeah, I can I can finagle that a little bit. All right, section nineteen dash eleven dot one reservations. Could you hold up for a second, Jay? Yes, sir. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, so back to uh, Jay, if you wouldn't mind scrolling up. Uh, I'm only could see from letter W right now. Um, what back to the top where it starts. I'm, I, I'd like to start from the um, prohibited. I'll tell you when I could see. Okay. The, I could see now. I could see the following activities are prohibited. So I said, I heard Marissa. She has a red line version and possibly in front of her. Um, I'm curious as to which of these have changed. And uh, before I forget, letter E, I feel needs to have the six foot designation on there because people have leashes that could run, I don't know, 20 feet. And uh, E is not sufficient to control your dog, just saying that somebody's on a leash i agree we had that and now i, I now i can't in. see jay's screen at all but sorry have, have a, i'm just I went, okay uh, mine um, is very slow so it, it'll, it'll take a few seconds for, for me to even see it but thank you now i can see it appreciate okay, sure. it sure so the way it used to read was other than within the designated dog run all dogs must be leashed and under the control of a person using a leash no longer than six feet No, that makes sense. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think that, that accomplishes what we want, right? That a person's in control of the dog. Yeah, and, I think that, that which, sorry, Michelle. And that the dog that the leash is no longer than six feet. So that's two things you want, right? Yeah, I think just the question, yeah, uh, other than within the yeah, as long as you keep in the other within other than within the designated dog run, that should be fine. Um, so I can add that back in. And I believe they have separate rules posted for the dog run, which I don't believe we're dealing with at all this evening, but uh, I have not taken a photo of the dog leash, the uh, dog run signs and what their rules are. And I'm not even sure if they're actually on this code, but if they are, that's another story. I'm not proposing that we go into that right now. Um, so if it wouldn't be too troublesome, this is a request at this point, Marissa, um, mm -hmm. if there are items here that have not been amended in any way, I'd like to make sure that we know which of those are, or the one, or if it's a shorter list, which ones we actually made changes to. <laughs> sure. Uh, but first of all, 
first and foremost, uh, the definitions changed in that there is now a definition for motorized vehicle, and I believe park changed slightly to make it more um, concrete as to what was there before. But before there was not any sort of definition for motorized vehicle, so there was a big question as to what that means um, for the general public reading this. Um, I mean, I don't want to be overly restrictive, but uh, I don't know if these hoverboards or any other thing needs to be considered. Uh, I mean, those are things that my grandkids seem to use rather dangerously. Uh, but, you know, I don't want to be a killjoy or if it's over consideration, I'm fine. You mean adding it into the term shall include, but not... I, don't, I just the... I just wanted to raise it, you know, if this is a concern for anybody. I, I mean, uh, it seems like there is some open-endedness this term shall include, but not be limited to cars. I mean, we did mention uh, electrical vehicles for the disabled. Um, again, if no one else on the board has even the slightest concern. If you're not using, I mean, it's pretty clear. It's If it's anything other than muscle power, and I'm assuming nobody has a hamster powered poker, <laughs> at least not yet. Um, <laughs> then th that pretty much rules out anything but an electric motor or any, you know, kind of fuel run engine. Yeah, I've seen these motorized <laughs> unicycles know. that. I'll what are our hoverboards um, motorized? Yes. Okay, and I guess yeah. those those uh, what are the things that people stand on and they go? They look like skateboards with a handle on them. What are those called? That's a hoverboard. That's, that's the hoverboard. a hoverboard. Well, oh. No, that's just like an electric scooter. Yeah. Electric scooter? No. Your mm -hmm. scooter is motorized yeah. and therefore not allowed. You know, a raised scooter is a bicycle, so that would be acceptable. Because so, it's only you have to you, fit to move. Okay. So, you know, if we think about the if we think about the vehicles that people people typically use in parks that are muscle powered, that would be bicycles. Tricycles, unicycles, something like a razor scooter, skateboards, roller skates, okay. and all their varieties of numbers of wheels and arrangement of wheels. And um, I guess that's it. Uh, well, true, but not limited. Yeah, uh, I'd also like to say, you know, this. Oh, you cut out. I was just going to this the, the action that we're taking here uh, since last week uh, was really driven by uh, the abusive use of the park, especially Powerhouse Park, uh, with relation to all the barbecuing, littering, alcohol, beverages. So um, sounds like the motorized vehicle thing was all these recent uh, additions, like. I do see in Manhattan now riding these unicycle things. Or they actually look like a unicycle, but you stand on them. And uh, we're going about 15 miles an hour, which if somebody. But I'm fine with the motorized vehicle thing. I don't think we have to try to anticipate, you know, every, every Star Trek vehicle that's going to. I was also going to say, I don't know if you can hear me now, but yeah, we can have bad internet. There's many people who have nothing. So this is a very limited meeting, by the way. Yeah, I was going to suggest, and it sounds like a good time uh, to do so. So I don't know how much action we, we want to take anyway. Yeah, once we do open the public hearing, then I think it's important. If we did close it tonight, I'm not sure that we will, but at the very least, uh, if we close the oral component, we should probably leave it open for written comments for at least a week, just to allow anybody who can't access tonight to be able to 
um, you know, voice their concerns if they have any. Well, can we ask the public who is on uh, the meeting if they have any comments now and then absolutely to that. Open? Thank you. For I, sure. I have Pretty one sure more. my colleagues would agree. I have, I have a question for Marissa. I don't even so, know if you hear me because my screen is frozen. So <laughs> we hear you. Yes, we hear you. Okay. Marissa, can you hear me? Yeah, you do. Um, should we also include a schedule of assets for this particular law? Uh, defined assets as what are determined to be uh, the definitions of par yeah parks there, but should mm -hmm. there be a schedule of assets for that? Oh, you mean the different parks? Yes. That would be a good idea. Yeah. Enter your access yeah, code or that. meeting number. Because, um, you know, you never know. That could change okay. in the future as to what parks exist within the town. So, yes, we can do that. Okay. Cool. Thank you. If mm -hmm. we're, this is Jay. If we're concerned about Enter your the, yeah. the number of parks by and the is attracting if you parks, know your and, uh, number. Included by Hey Dave, you need to mute Ken. Dave, yeah, I, I'm gonna log off. Ah, WebEx meetings in the time of hurricane and COVID. <laughs> Uh, Michelle, this is John. If I can make a suggestion, you can hear yeah. me? Yes, we can. I think Ken's audio would be better if he just called in via phone and forget about the WebEx. That's a good idea. I think that's exactly what he is doing, and that's what we were hearing him do is call in. So uh, I just have to figure out, now I have to figure out which call-in user he is. Well, let's, well unmute. Five. This is Ken talking, right? Okay. You'll see my He's voice caller moving five. And you... Call in five. Okay. Caller five. You're caller five. All right, we got you, Ken. Okay, so John was saying it's better if you just don't even try WebEx, just call in and. Um... Well, I think if you keep my WebEx thing muted, I'll be able to see the screen, which is yes. important to me. Yes. Yes, exactly. But for speaking, use your phone. I think that's what John does anyway. Yeah, his his audio is much better now. Yes. Okay. I I know you guys don't want to miss a syllable that I have to say. <laughs> and we only want right, to well, So we left off at uh, taking public comments, correct, Michelle? Yes. Uh, well, wait, just. Oh, Jane. Sorry. Uh, I don't know. If if you got me through the through the Ken labyrinth there, Marissa, if we're concerned about the the asset list changing, can we include it by reference? You know, so the, the yeah. list of parks mm -hmm. is listed in the parks and recreation office kind of thing. Yeah, we'll do it as either a schedule. We could do it as both as a schedule and that schedule will be on file in the parks and recreation office as well as at the town hall. Okay. Does anybody want me to read through the rest of this before we open it to comment, or we think it's okay? Well, there are some common users, so we went through all the prohibitions, pro prohibited yes, activities, I guess, and now the next part is reservations, which isn't too long, so you could read through that, and then we can open it up for public comment. Oh, uh, then we have hours and penalties. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, geez. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. We'll get there. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. 19-11.1 reservations. A. Reservations are required for use of parks by groups of 10 or more and for organized athletic events. B. No park or portion thereof will be reserved by any group <laughs> whose size or activity is in the opinion of the town board or director of parks and recreation will be detrimental to the park. C. Reservations for organized athletic events will be issued by the director of parks and recreation of the town. Reservations for facilities by groups of 10 or more will be issued by the clerk of the town. I would put an asterisk on that one. I'm not sure why we're doing it that way. Yeah, the reservations will be made only to town residents or organizations. E. 
The use of town parks by groups of more than 25 in number is prohibited without first obtaining a permit for such use from the town clerk upon placing a cash deposit to guarantee that the area will be properly cleaned up after such event and no damage will be caused by the group members. Subsection 1, the amount of deposit shall be established by resolution of the town board. Subsection 2, said deposit shall be refunded to the applicant only after a determination by the highway superintendent or his designee of any damage and cleanup costs. Uh, any comment on that before we move on? Yeah, I, do we have to provide? I mean, so, you know, if you're having groups come in there and they're renting or, or leasing or whatever they're doing, such as what we see um, in Corey Field, shouldn't there be a... a um, a rider of of liability or something like that, Marissa, that they have to provide, and should that be included in the in this particular part of the law? As a cert, yeah, like as a certificate, they would need to sign. Um, yes, we can include that. Um, that's a best practice for sure. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, if if I could raise my hand, I, I don't know how we're signaling take turn taking, I'd be fine with raising my hand. Uh, I don't want to cut anybody off, but I don't know why letter D isn't letter A. Uh, that should be first and foremost clear. Reservations will be made only to town residents or organizations. I think that should be letter A. I agree. Okay. okay. Yep. I'm, I'm taking these notes. <laughs> so um, going I back with what Jay had mentioned earlier, uh, I think it was letter C, Jay. Or no, what, which one were you talking about? Where, oh, okay, it was C. Reservations for athletic events will be issued by the Director of Parks and Recreation, but reservations for facilities by groups of more than 10 are by the town clerk. So let's let's talk about that for a second. Should we, should we keep that all uh, nestled within the Director of Parks and Recreation with uh, town board approval? No, I mean, at the way it actually says, I mean, the only people who need reservations are groups of 10 or more. The reservations for that's currently a. Okay, Director right. of parks and recreation issues the athletic issues. The. Organization. Oh, I see what it is. Oh, it the okay. So recreation. Go ahead. So the uh, parks director. Uh, or takes the reservations for athletic events and the town clerk takes reservations for groups of 10 or more who just want to have a picnic or a party. Yeah, or any, any other use, it sounds like, right? Outside of yeah, that. Yeah, and that's that's the way it's written now. I don't think Howard changed that provision, but I see the confusion. So I'm thinking that we should split that up differently um, and reorganizing it, I think, will also help with the other suggestions that were made. So making it so that, you know, just organized ath athletics generally are with the parks and recreation department, but 10 plus for any other type of event is a town clerk um, responsibility. If that's what the board wants, unless they want it to stay entirely with the parks and recreation department, that's up to you guys. I think it should stay with one person because I would hate to preserve the field for a picnic for my family and discovered that the Little League had also reserved the park for I agree. A Little League game. And because we were doing it with different people, the calendars got conflated. I agree with that point. And I'm and unless there's a reason why the cash deposit thing can't go through parks and rec. It's a park. I would keep it with Parks and Rec. I don't. Which, which yeah, wording I, are you? Which yeah. wording are you talking about, Jay? Which number? All of them. I don't understand why some reservations are made through the Director of Parks and Recreation, and some re reservations are made through the Town Clerk, unless it has something to do with the deposit. But I think everybody should be putting a deposit down. So, whoever is allowed to handle them, if there's, sorry, this is a parks and recreation item. I think it should be under the parks and recreation director. Unless for some reason 
the fact that money is changing hands means it has to be the town clerk. That could be it. I mean, it just seems like the athletic events or groups of 10 or more is just a reservation where if it's 25 or more, then it's a permit, which is. For, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, go, I've oh, never go, done go. any reservations for parks or anything. I believe it's always been Sherry. I've never had any come through my office. Yeah, right, which so. is interesting because that that's the way it's written now. It's just right. practice that, that right, hasn't so. happened. So I, I don't believe there's any reason why I can't all go through the parks and rec department. I will double check, but it's too hard to search right now. But I don't think there's any reason that that can't go through. I, I yeah, uh, Sherry should keep control of both with the second step for part two to be passed on to the town clerk for the payment. Something like that, right? Uh, sure, I mean, but if Sherry can take the money, then why make people go to two different windows? Yeah, I, I, I'm not going to disagree with you. I'm just not sure what the monetary uh, handling protocol is in town hall. So, right, of course. Well, can I ask a question? So, the, one of the questions I think really those of us that live in Northern Tuxedo is the fact that um, some group is there now that's not town people that didn't pay any any fees or very little fees, didn't play, pay, and they're there every single day, which impacts the people who were in that park who were town residents. Nobody was told, nobody was informed in town that that was going to be the case. And so, you know, as a person that was impacted by that, um, I would say, is there some way in which whoever it is that takes a reservation lets people know? Um, that such events are going to happen, or is the events that are happening there now will never happen because this is not a town group. Yeah, I, well, I think that could be handled on the new website in the calendar function, right? Some somehow. <laughs> I, I think you're talking about Tournament City, right? That's the the outside organization that has softball tournaments there. Yeah, pretty much every yeah. day. Yeah, and, and actually, and something, something, something about. Different. Yeah, the other thing about Tournament City is they actually came a couple of years ago and uh, they have a contract of some kind that I remember there was a resolution for. So I don't see any language wrapped around that, but I'm sure that's all supplemental, right, Marissa? I mean, yeah. that, that language would not really readily be in this document, but a supplemental to it, right? Agreed. Well, yeah. the letter D, letter D would supersede, if that's the correct word, all of that because uh, if reservations will be only to town residents or organizations uh, that this outside contract would have had to have been approved by the town board and uh, currently what's going on there as far as I'm concerned is in violation of letter D and uh, should not continue without approval of the town board this town board not previous town boards I agree. Correct. And there, there's also, there was penalty provisions before, but in this um, proposed version of the law, there is an increased penalty. So, Jay, once you get to penalties, the only thing that's changed is that it used to say $50 and now it says $250. Um, obviously, as a strong deterrent to that happening um, as an enforcement issue. Right. Well, what, you, what uh, you're also not seeing here, there is a reservation uh, a form that needs to be filled out that does stipulate uh, uh, a deposit for cleanup. And um, currently it has a waiver on it, uh, which I think we'd have to review that form itself because um, we're, 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 we're kind of getting mixed there between talking about a specific uh, arrangement right now and what the law is, which uh, as far as I'm concerned, if, if letter D was enforced that town parks are for town residents or organizations for reservations, then uh, the issue that Maria ra raised actually wouldn't have happened. Well, if that's, I mean, but reservations, could they, uh, is that different from permits? I mean, it seems like once you get to a group of 25 or more in letter E, 
then you have to have a permit. And then that permit has, uh, you know, specifications and requirements. A reservation is different, I think. Seems to Correct. me from reading. It's a that. lower level. Yeah, for sure. Well, then so, I want it to be clear. Does, does, does the re does whether it's reservations or permits is that to residents or town organizations or now on the higher level are we opening that up to outside groups and then who makes that determination because there is a conflict happening right now with this group at at quarry field that in my view should never have been should never have happened just based on the uh Park town town director of parks and recreation. I, I feel like that should not have been a decision made by town and recreation to issue basically what is a very vague contract with that organization. Well, maybe the um, E section one should say the contract and amount of deposit shall be established. You know, shall be approved and established by resolution of the town board. So it comes to the town board, any such large permit like that. Okay. Um, this is yeah, I, just don't, I, I, I just don't see these parks being used uh, as, as a revenue generator. I think that for the, for the use of town residents and organizations, and uh, I think I'm concerned about uh, Residents being bumped to accommodate what I guess is being considered a revenue stream. Okay, so maybe we should continue going through this so we can open it up for comment. Yeah, well, I'd like the town board to have that comment finished first. Yeah, so. oh, absolutely. So, should we move on? I think so. Very good. Yeah. Well, I'll just I'll just close it off. The, the the difference between reservations and uh, permits still seems very vague to me, and uh, that that's definitely going to need some tightening up. I would say reservations. Certain reservations are okay by the park director, and but permits for ongoing use have to come to the town board. Again, though, is, 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 is what's currently letter D applicable to all of that? I believe that was the intention, but again, unfortunately, I didn't draft this. So um, I believe that's what the intention is, but, you know, we can change that. Um, we can make it more clear. We can split it out if that's not what everybody wants, um, whatever your prerogative is. Well, the, uh, I mean, we've had discussions in the past of um you know concerts uh car shows food truck events that might be organized by an outside group so those if we still want to consider having those that would yeah, be i think that if we're going to have a permitting process i, I mean the reservations can only be made by town residents or organizations and then uh, maybe what E needs to be is the use of town parks by groups of more than 25 or number, you know, in number or, you know, foreigners need a permit. And it should be a permit that is, you know, approved by the board. Uh, right, I agree. So let's, yeah, so I know we have comments coming in from the public. Uh, in the chat function, do we want to finish going through all of it and then go back yes. and get comments? I would. Okay, so. But are we done with this section? For now. For <laughs> now. All right. We're, we're to the end, almost. Section 19 12, hours of closing. No person shall be permitted to remain or stop or park within the confines of any town park between the hours of 9 p.m. and 7 a.m. prevailing local time, except in emergencies or with a special permit from the Director of Parks and Recreation. Stop. Should Sir. we change that to dust to dawn because of the 
the lighting issues. I mean, probably don't want anybody back there after dark. And the seasons, you know, will change and change those windows. If that's legal, makes sense to me. Marissa? It's definitely legal. That, this section is not any different than what exists now. So um, I'm not sure that we've talked about this explicitly before, unless you talked about it with just Howard. Um, so that's why it's not changed at all. It's, it's, it's a real micro. It's a real micro concern, but I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> uh, we get a lot of people that go, you know, that happen to, you know, it's dark at 5:30 in November. You get a nice warm evening, and they're congregated behind the powerhouse park uh, stage, right? So that gives right. you a better, okay. a better window of opportunity to operate within. I agree. Yeah. That's too dawn, then. Okay. All right. B. In case of an emergency, or when, in the judgment of the director of parks and recreation of the town, the public interest demands it, any portion of the park may be closed to the public or to designated persons until permission is given to reopen. Okay. Um, and my only question there would be: Is that only the director of parks, or you know, town park, town board? Well, I, I think it should be multiple entities. I think the director of parks, the town board, and the police department should all well, probably have. Yeah, I agree. Okay. I agree. Okay, so I'll add in comma town board and or police town of Tuxedo Police Department. Item C, notwithstanding the hours of closing stated herein, the director of parks and recreation may establish closing areas. Oh, sorry, closing hours for designated park facilities. Maybe for like a movie night or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, probably. Well, I mean, that would get yeah. that would get a special permit. Yeah, I'm mean, gonna. I would suggest that I add in after establish, you know, different or some term like that because it doesn't. Really so when, when Sherry, when Sherry obviously does a movie night, she doesn't have to have a permit. That, I mean, that's obvious, right? But anybody else that wants to organize that would have to go through the reservation process at Al. I guess. So. Technically, she does need a permit, but she probably won't have any trouble getting one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think we approved the movie night, didn't we? I think we, I think it was just kind of an email notification. We all chimed in that we didn't have a problem with it, but there was no uh, formal um, request. Okay. On to penalties. 19 13 penalty for offenses and enforcement. A, a violation of this article shall constitute an offense punishable by a fine not to exceed $250. For each and every such offense. That sounds like a user fee, not a penalty to me, but okay. B, this chapter may be enforced by law enforcement officials of the town, the county, and the state of New York. Okay. Is the DEC included in the state of New York? The yes. DEC police. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Should we have a minimum there? Of a penalty? No. No. Okay. No. No mandatory minimums only hurt the people who can't afford them the most. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Agree. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, the the section two. This local law will immediately take effect upon filing with the secretary of state. But that's a uh, Necessary condition. Correct. Okay, so we have, let's see who we have in chat. We got Mary Gretzer who wants to. Yeah. I think John Banyo had a comment also. I'm not sure if you ever uh, did a motion to actually officially open the public hearing. Oh. We should probably do that. <laughs> okay. Ken, are you there? Why don't you do it, Michelle? Because I'm having a lot of trouble over here. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to open the public hearing. A second, Dave okay. McMillan. Okay, I'll take roll call. Jay. Aye. Scott. Okay, Dave McMillan. Aye. Maria May. Aye. 
Ken English? Aye. Michelle Lindsay? Aye. Okay. All right, and I will keep sharing this if people want me to go back to a particular section, I'd be happy to. Okay, that's perfect. Okay. So, so far you said we have Mary. Yeah, Mary, I guess John, John had a comment or a question. Yes, uh, Mary, can go, Mary can go first. I'll go after she does. Okay, Mary, your mic is open. You're okay, open thank you. Can, um, I just hope you really didn't think that was a public hearing that you just held. Because in my mind, a public hearing is given on something that you've been able to publish ahead of time. So the public has a chance to look at it and read and digest and inwardly whatever, however that thing goes, so that you can think about what your comment is going to be. That certainly didn't happen just now. I well, don't know we... why you people can't have a <laughs> workshop that the rest of us don't necessarily need to go to and work this all out and then put a document up to let us know and then we'll have a public hearing. This is really disorganized. Well, I think um, I'll take a stab at that. Um, you know, the we had decided at the beginning of the meeting that because so many people are having trouble with internet, that we were going to start the we were going to open the public hearing and uh, keep it open through the next uh, town board meeting. And in the meantime, we were going to uh, make it. Uh, available and and I think a workshop like you're suggesting is sort of what just happened. But I'll go so far as to say yes, your comment is well taken, and Thank I plead uh, tropical storm damage as part of the reason why we're a little disorganized for this meeting. But uh, absolutely, we'll work out more things in the back room and then present them for comment. Thank you. Um, I it, may I speak to, I, I think uh, one of the other reasons that, you know, we, when we meet, you know, to discuss this, other than in a public meeting, um, it's hard to do because we are breaking um, the sunshine laws. So some of this workshop is happening now for that reason. We don't want to go emailing back and forth with each other and leaving you all out of the understanding why we're doing what we're doing. So it does look like the sausage making is happening in front of you. And I think that is the whole point of doing this so that you guys know our thinking behind these rules and that you have input in them uh, before they become, you know, a complete product that will be approved by the town board. So that is another reason why we're doing this this way. Thank you, Maria. You well, better than I, I I'd like to add uh, uh, Mary's uh, comment to me is well taken. I mean, uh, as Jay pointed out, we're, we're wrestling with all kinds of technical issues, but I'll also point mm -hmm. out there was some urgency to try to look at, at this uh, uh, laws related to the use of the park. I'm sure everybody understands we've had a lot of challenges with people uh, coming to visit Tuxedo, and not all all of our visitors have been uh, respectful of our facilities. So um, we're also trying to take action to ensure that our parks are used properly and that uh, the rules are clear so that our police department and other town officials can enforce them. But absolutely, we're not going to take any action uh, uh, this evening. This quote unquote public hearing will be continued to the next meeting. We'll make sure that any changes that are made to the draft of the law that we're reviewing will be up. And so uh, hopefully that addresses some of your concerns, Mary, because they are legitimate concerns. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just want to say, um, so yeah, with all those things everyone else said, and we're up against the wall, you know, technology-wise and everything else through this COVID and the, and the uh, storms. Normally speaking, in, in normal protocol, we wouldn't allow the public to make comments in a workshop. So this is a workshop slash public hearing, which will remain open. And we also allow the public to have comments while we're going through this first V1 document. So 
I feel that that's important that the public should have comments, um, whether it's a workshop or not. But under 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 those provisios, normally they're not allowed to comment on workshops. So I think uh, this is a better format. Although Mary, I believe you are totally correct in in what you described earlier. But you know, for all the reasons stated by my colleagues, I believe this is the best way to handle this particular one. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Hey, John, Daniel. Uh, yes, uh, speaking as a public citizen and not in my official capacity, uh, to give the town maximum flexibility, uh, perhaps a statement to the effect that uh, upon the discretion of an appropriate town official, and that would have to be defined, um, use of the town parks would be restricted to town residents only and perhaps their immediate family members, something like that, a, a blanket statement. Um, it's partially handled by some of the reservation issues that you guys discussed, but um, you know, maybe a broad uh, blanket statement might, might help. Yeah. I believe there are some, uh, and Marissa can speak to this better, but I believe there are some uh, legal issues with, with closing parks that have been open to the public to just residents. Yeah, uh, I'll chime in there. Uh, we can't close them entirely um, because these parks, as Jeff said, have already been used for a public purpose. We could create a new park tomorrow and say it's only for town residents and that would be fine. Um, there's also the issue with some of the parks having state and federal funding. So you can't keep other non residents out um, based on that. Um, but you can kind of the way we're trying to deal with that is, you know, anybody can come in, but reservations can only be for town residents or groups, um, which is permissible. So we've kind of tried to toe the line between the two um, to allow the benefit for both groups. I think one of the challenges with that, Marissa, is, uh, you know, the institutional memory of what parks did utilize any state or federal funding. Because at Tiki Field in, in Laurel Ridge in Northern Tuxedo, the signs mm -hmm. do say exclusively used for uh, town residents. And so, I mean, I don't know how you would go back to see, I guess Tiki Field might not might be somewhat easier because I think that park was created in the 60s, but um, I don't know how you'd go back to see if, if, if a penny of state or federal money went to, to being, you know, development or maintenance or whatever of the park, that would be a real challenge. Yeah, exactly. And it's probably not something that the town wants to spend money figuring out, right? Um, and also, it's not just it's not just the federal or state money. It's the fact that Parkland generally, as everybody knows, it's it's for the public, right? Um, you can't alienate it or take it away. That's unconstitutional. Um, so, if the park was not created when it was made uh, specifically for town residents, basically, you're not supposed to do that. Um, you're not supposed to only make it for town residents. So. Like I said, going forward, if we were to make a new park or, you know, change the boundaries on something, it's possible that we could do that in the future and make that, a, you know, just a blanket policy. But it's really hard to do that and parcel out, like you said, the state or federal money or parcel out whether or not, you know, a lot of these parks weren't created with any sort of language. Um, you know, it was a long time ago for a lot of them. So that area of law has changed a lot in the past like couple of decades. So unfortunately, it's kind of hairy. So the erection of signs that say town residents only is purely a diversionary tactic in our case, right? We're, we're still allowed to correct, put it correct. up there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, you, you, we can put them up. Um, and, you know, you notice many municipalities have those signs, but you can't really enforce it. Okay. This is long as we're not violating anything by those signs. So no, you're okay with the signs. Do you want to, Dave, do you I mean, want to that, argue? That brings, in, that brings into question now the whole reservations thing, you know, um, our reservations and permits. I, I think the permit issue, I, I, I heard some talk about uh, whether that was going to be through town board approval for a permit, which 
seems to be the the threshold is 25 or more people involved. And then the reservation thing is uh, if reservations will be made only to town residents or organizations. Uh, I guess then an ad hoc uh, softball game uh, on a field is a permitted activity. Yes, it it would be if you're not reserving and you just show up under the way that this is written and under the way it's written now uh, what exists currently they would be allowed but obviously if someone had a permit then they could obviously they bump, bump mm -hmm. whoever is just ad hoc playing on the field correct correct Dave, do you want to unmute uh, the other callers? Um, number three is Irene Logan. See if she has a comment. Um, I think that being consistent with other parks that say close at dusk, they're closed from dusk to dawn. I've noticed that sign on other parks. So I think that that would be um, a good broad blanket um, provision. Thank you. Yeah, that makes You're sense. Welcome. That was a good suggestion from Dave, and I think we'll all, we all agree on that. Thank you. Any other call in user? Okay. You want to go? Should we go down the um, participant list, Dave? We lose Dave. I'm here. Oh, sorry. okay. I'm you, sorry. I, I was talking. I was talking to you. Sorry. Uh, no, um, no. So I, I unmute. I unmuted the rest of the callers. Yeah. Um, anybody who has called in, if you have a comment or a question, do so at this time. Yeah, we didn't get one. So I'm now. Okay. I'm thinking you could go down the uh, the names. The first one is Lynn Kelly. Okay, Lynn Kelly. Do you have a comment or a question? You are unmuted. Doesn't sound like it. Okay, Dale Matola, I'm supposing that's you, Dale M. Um, I'm just a little concerned with permits needing to be going before the town board for approval. I totally understand protecting our parks, um, but <clears throat> town board approval can happen really only twice a month. And I think that seems Pretty obstructive, so I'm I'm not sure that doing it that way is the best idea. Maybe there's a way to differentiate long term, like seasonal permits, as opposed to a one day event. With Maybe a one day being okay without town board approval, Michelle. Is well, that what you're I know. I'm I'm just wondering, like. I think what I was thinking of, I don't know about the other town board members, is that like a permit for a food truck festival or a car show, or that's kind of what I was thinking. Those would obviously need to be planned months in advance. So maybe there's a way to say, you know, a seasonal contract such as with Tournament City that I think should be approved by the town board and that's a, that's negotiated months in advance. And then uh, maybe we could say permits for special events. Or I don't know how to, uh, yeah, like a one day event. Maybe there's a way to differentiate. Right. And, and I agree with, you know, like, as you said, a food truck festival or anything like that is required going to require months of planning and there would be plenty of time to go through a permitting process. But if it's uh, some sort of, you know, fairly short notice event that might have 20 more than 25 people, it's right. especially for a town resident, you know, I can I can see it being more more um, more of a barrier for non-residents because that's part of the point of this, but I hate to put the barrier 
for town residents. Right. Maybe Marissa, the can town we board have, members have a way we can get around that and, and well, have flexibility? If can we make the uh sorry, let me go up here. Uh if we can, can we have reservations and permits for residents go through the director of parks and rec and, and everybody and, else go through town board and permits for you know no other reservations can be made by people outside the park but permits for outside aid organizations need to be approved by the town board <laughs> we could certainly do that That's a good comment. I mean, this sounds like a real distinction between reservations and permits because, you know, the reservation uh, that is only available to residents or town organizations, I believe, uh, is what was stipulated under the reservations. Um, reservations will be made only to town residents or organizations uh, and that anything else if you're not a town resident or organization, you're applying for some kind of a permit. Right. So, Marissa, wouldn't that require that reservations would now have to go into the definition section as well? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Just going to say that. Because yeah. e, e actually doesn't distinguish between town residents and organizations or non. Right. And I think that's there for the situation such as tournament city. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or the food yeah, trucks, I or think the that concerts, was, yeah. those big, yeah. those much larger, definitely pre-planned -pre events that in my view would need approval by the town board because you're, you're, um, you're, re you're reserving the use uh, where now residents do not have access to the facility because you've granted a permit for a space. Right. And events that may involve police uh, oversight and things like that too, that certainly would need approval by the, and knowledge and approval by the town board. Yeah, insurance, all kinds of things, absolutely. Mm -hmm. The security, parking, uh, yeah. crowd control. Yep, agree, that, that, those kind of events clearly need oversight by the town board, no doubt. Okay, so I will make those suggested changes, which include okay. a definition change and better parameters on what a reservation versus permit for both residents and non-residents entails. Thank you. Anything mm -hmm. else, Dale? No, that that's the thing that comes to my mind. Okay, thanks so much for your comment. Much appreciated. Um, Donna Matthews, you're a resident of the East Village. Do you have any input? No, you covered everything. Okay. Just Thank you. To be clear, this isn't just Powerhouse Park. This is any town park. Right. Right. You're good? I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Hank, you have the floor, sir. Hi, how you doing? Hello, everybody. Good evening. I, I've been following along. Um, and it, it, I keep thinking about in New Jersey, Marwa, Montdale, and Upper Saddle River had tried this. And um, I don't know how they made out in the end, but they were being sued. And uh, it was costing a residents a lot of money and everything um it, if somebody would research it uh they'd do a better job than me but it, it's it was about a year and a half two years ago and um they wanted to restrict their parks to only residents and they had a really tough time and that's all i have to say thanks thank you thank you Hank. thank you yeah I, if I'm recalling correctly, that's what I'm referring to before when I was talking about that you can't prohibit them entirely, um, which is why we're not doing that. We're just talking about reservations. I will check as to whether or not they had any issues with reservations or permits or anything. I don't believe so. Um, 
but we'll double check for this second round of edits to make sure. So thank you for bringing that up. Thanks, Marissa. Also, those, mm -hmm. those municipalities also had some significant problems with selective enforcement. Yes. At I least the I perception can, of I selective enforcement. <laughs> yep. Thank you, Hank. Um, so can I, may I, can I add something? Uh, this has been something that has been on my mind since this whole park thing. So my understanding is that people in town, when we look at the Economic Development Committee, they want us to be reliant or more open to tourism. So what draws people to us is our, our hiking and our trails and things like that. I think that we need to be careful about discouraging people from coming, but also we need to be careful that our facilities aren't ruined. I think that, you know, I, I feel like we've lost um, the ability because we're upset about what's happening, particularly at Paros House Park and at the at Lucky Park, we've lost the whole view of that other part of us wanting Tuxedo to be a place that people want to come to. Um, you know, I, so I think we need to, I want to keep that in the back of our minds too. Um, you know, so make rules that are, you know, make sure that our parks are, you know, in good shape, but also not restrict other people from coming. Uh, otherwise, why, how are we going to encourage tourism? I don't know. Does that seem like, like, you know, ideas slip, that are opposite to each other? It's a slippery slope. That's for sure, Maria. I, I think we have to take a baseline here, though, which which we're doing. Um, yeah. And then we have to once we have the next version of it, we can look at it from your perspective. I totally agree. I mean, you know, that's a big part of economic development here, right? And and taking into consideration of access to the hiking trails and everything else that's uh, ancillary to the parks. So, yeah, it's a good point and thanks for bringing it up. Yeah, no, I agree, but I also think that part of what we're trying to do here. Um, we, the problem isn't that there are people coming and using our parks. The problem is there are people coming and abusing our parks. And our hospitality right. and when we tried to. Weed out the the bad actors, uh, the police basically said, we don't have anything that we can do. We don't have, we don't have rules that we can enforce. Good point. So I think that one of the things we're trying to do here is, um, make sure that we have clear rules about what are acceptable behaviors for everyone. Um, and if you, if you want to come and meet our very basic standards of civic behavior, you're welcome. And if not, no, but I agree with you. We has to be careful not to be too exclusive. And it, yeah, it has to be written in order to be enforced. So, of course, enforcement is discretionary at, you know, at the, at those levels. Right? So, yeah, it, it's a slippery slope Maria. <laughs> yeah, I just, you know, I think, you know what it, I think is a balance. But I think that we need to take that into consideration because we're counting on that. I mean, that's part of our comprehensive plan. Uh, particularly as you know, we are getting more and more out of COVID and, and uh, Lego land opens and rent fair opens, you know, that is going to open for people to come here. I mean, so I just don't want to, I want us to keep that in mind as well as, like you said, you know, we don't want people to abuse our parks, but we don't also want to discourage them um, from coming. Good point. I mean, one thing about tourism and economic development will could also be more events, I guess, and then that would be controlled. Yeah, in addition to what you're saying, making sure we have more events to draw people. Okay, um, back to comments. Jerry Matola, any comments or questions? Oh yes, I do have a comment, sir. Have the floor. Um, I look at your stating of dust to dawn as a problem. 
simply because there used to be a tuxedo softball league and the game started at six o'clock because well from work and then had to go over to Murphy Field and play their seven innings or nine innings, whatever it was, and then it would be dark. It would be dust before the game even got halfway through. Um, and in the fall, when you have things like Family Fun Day, technically dusk is maybe 4 o'clock and you're not even cleaning up yet or up yet. Uh, so I would just, I would rather see a time, stated time of whatever it should be whether it be nine to seven or whatever. Well, I'm, I'm sure that we would, for, in, in those uses that you just described, I'm certain that we would have some sort of waiver for that dust to dawn law or rule or condition in those explicit cases. Uh, and anybody else can, can comment if they'd like from the board. But. Yeah, I think that that's the second, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, C says, notwithstanding the hours stated herein, the director of parks and recreation may establish closing hours for designated facilities. So, I mean, we could reword that to say for specific events. Right. Any other questions or comments, Sherry? Done. All right, thank you very much. Uh, well, Jim Davies, you're on here for some other business, but any comments real quick? Uh, have somebody, Jim Davies, no? Oh, WebEx user John, any comments or questions? Oh, that's John Daniel. Oh, uh, he's on WebEx too? Yeah, he is, so he can see the screen, but oh, Paul... Oh, okay, 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 okay. Sorry, John. Uh, WebEx user Johnny. Any comments? Yeah. You have the floor. Uh, no. I'm trying. Hold on. Johnny. Hold on. Okay, we'll see if we can back. Yes. Hey, buddy. Hey, how you doing, John? Any comments or questions on this subject? I have no questions, but I appreciate the shout out. I hope everybody's well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, WebEx user Nicholson, any comments or questions? You have the floor. Webex user Nicholson, going once, going twice. Am I muted? Uh, you are now. <laughs> okay, that looks like it, Michelle. Okay, very good. So we're not, should uh, Marissa do, what's the resolution to keep it open? We're gonna keep it open to the next meeting pending the additional changes that were discussed tonight and a new copy will be circulated uh, on the website and to all the members as well. Okay, so I'd like to make a motion to keep the public hearing open uh, pending what Marissa said, changes. <laughs> pending those changes. Making the changes available to the town board and the public for review uh, before the next uh, town board meeting on, what's the date? 24th of August. And do I have a second? I second that. Any discussion? My only discussion, uh, especially based on some of the comments we had earlier, can we get those changes published this time next week so that everyone has at least a week to review and digest them? Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'll go through roll call. Uh, Jay Reichgott? 
Aye. Maria May? Aye. Dave McMillan? Aye. English? Aye. Michelle Lindsay? Aye. Unless anyone wants it up, I'm going to stop sharing all this stuff. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for doing that, Jay. My pleasure. So next up, um, Ken, is a resolution accepting the minutes. Would you like me to make that motion? Sure, thank you. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to accept the minutes of the regular bi-monthly meeting of the town board held on July 27th, 2020. Do I have a second? I'll second that, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Okay, go through roll call. Uh, Dave McMillan. Aye. Maria May. Aye. Jay Reichgott. Aye. Ken English. Aye. Michelle Lindsay. Aye. Yeah. All right. Ken, do you have the packet in front of you? Uh, I do. Okay, you're, we're up to where um, you're accepting the monthly reports for the month of July. I am in receipt of monthly reports from the Just Depart Justice Department and the town clerk. And now we go to uh, town, town supervisor update. Okay, just one second, please. Okay, I wanted to bring to everyone's attention that tomorrow, Tuesday, August 11th, 2020 at 3 p.m., uh, there will be an open uh, WebEx forum meeting out from the Tuxedo Sewer LDC meeting. Uh, that will again happen via the town's WebEx accessible through our town website, same one that we operate all town board meetings on. Um, I wanted to update everyone on the Highway Department Long Meadow Road site. We did receive a judge's order uh, to remove De Marino's equipment and materials from the site. Uh, these materials and equipment were hampering our cleanup, and uh, we got a very uh, uh, definitive uh, ruling from the, the court uh, ordering Mr. De Marino to remove his equipment. Uh, effective uh, as of today, his equipment should have been removed. Uh, I've been scheduling budget meetings to prepare for our 2021 budget. I've had a meeting with the highway department. I uh, will be meeting with Chief Abbott and uh, police representation tomorrow. Um, look forward to meeting with other department heads uh, very soon. Uh, Cleaning bids, for, we put out an RFP trying to identify a contractor to do uh, cleaning maintenance on town uh, properties such as Town Hall, the highway garage, the train station, the police station, and Murphy Field bathrooms. Uh, we did review those. Uh, we did get one bid that was incomplete at our first round, so we, we offered another round. Uh, the bids are due Monday, August 17th, but we will have a tour. We offered a tour to interested contractors, which will happen tomorrow at noon. Uh, and Powerhouse Park, uh, everyone should have seen that there was a, a memo issued by, by myself and the town board, as well as uh, from the Parks and Recreation Director, <laughs> updating people, and which was a big impetus to our review of the of the e-code related to how we use parks. Uh, it's an effort to, as we've been discussing at length here tonight, to make sure we have definitive uh, use 
uh, permitted activities and also clarity as to how someone makes a reservation if you're a resident and how we also permit activities that are at a much larger scale. So uh, we are continuing with that. We've been working cooperatively with the police department to enforce the rules that are on the books because most of them that we've been discussing tonight are already on the books. Trying to make, make it clear again what uniform is, uh, what is permissible to anyone and uh, making sure we are being welcoming to visitors who, uh, and making sure that we have an equally enforced policy as to what is permissible in our parks. So um, that's, that, that's my update as of today. And uh, I will open the floor if any other town board members have any updates they wanted to share. Well, I'll start with the um, the SAM grant. So the one that we are going to uh, get from Senator Metzger, $100,000 to replace town hall roof. There's one final piece that DASNY, the dormitory of the state of, dormitory authority of the state of New York, is requesting from us is a SHPO de declaration because town hall is eligible for historical status. And so we have to send them a list of all the materials that currently are on the roof and the materials we plan to use so we can get a letter from them saying it's uh, approved by them. And also while I was at it, I uh, contacted uh, DASNY to see if we could reopen the SAM grant application from about two years ago. We were awarded by then Senator, oh, goodness, John. Check. Thank you. <laughs> Want to check uh, $75,000 for vehicles. And they said we can reopen that and uh, just have to redo some of the paperwork. So I'll be talking with uh, Sherry and Brian uh, who were involved with that. Um, so that's a new a new one. That's an old one. That's all I have. So Michelle, a question about grants in general. Yes. Um, and I, and forgive me because I've been through this before, but I always I always screw it up. But uh, so when we're awarded a grant, and I'm I'm assuming this is the case for every grant, does the town have to tender the payment for whatever work is being done first before the grant money is dispersed? There's a difference. Payment? Yeah, the uh, SAM grant and the CDBG grants are different, I believe, and I will have to check. Now, what we did with the uh, town hall roof is we budgeted $100,000. Actually, I think we budgeted a little more for um, any overage. We, uh, we budgeted that for this year uh, in case that's the way it works. So, and uh so as far as the vehicles go, uh, I will definitely find out. There was uh, some confusion in the process the last go round, so we'll make sure we understand it correctly this time. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Jay, do you know what the deal is with CDBG for the ADA bathrooms? Because uh, that's federal money. The, where, the question of whether we have to pay first and get reimbursed? Yes, uh, no, I don't, mm -hmm. but I will uh, see if I can find out. Um, since you gave me the floor and you asked about that, I will give you uh, an update on the status of that project. We uh, uh, people may or may not know that we got um, additional monies into that grant from our original ask, which are in fact, we have a grant that's larger than the current cost of our project, um, which is not free money. We have to give back anything we don't use, but we have also gotten approval for a couple of extensions to the project so that we can uh, make the, the, what's currently the women's room on the second floor of town hall uh, ADA compliant, so we'll have a uh, accessible restroom on the second floor 
and we can use some of the money to help uh, construct alternate storage space to replace some of the file storage area that's being used to create the first floor ADA compliant restroom. So we're working on we're working on drawings for that and change orders and any minute now the actual contract will be to Ken for signature so that we can get started on construction, which will hopefully happen in the next several weeks. And that's all I got. Maria? Um, so we are the about the website, our design approval paperwork was submitted after the last meeting uh, that night. And uh, we received uh, a, a letter from them saying that, that um, we're moving on to the next step. And the next step is the developers will actually build a staging web. Um, and then, um, but that the process will take several weeks. We are in, she said, it, it's like first come first serve. So as soon as that's uh, completed, then we'll be able to start actually working with our website, getting people trained, start putting in um, materials uh, and information. So I will awesome. let you all know when that is, you know, when when that's when that next step is ready. Maria, I just have one thing, one one concern that I just thought of. Uh, not related to the website itself, but related to the domain name tuxedogov.org. So currently our town clerk Donna is the one that actually owns the domain name. She has an account and I don't know whether it's network solutions or whatever it is. Uh, but we're we're going to have to find out the information to get access to that account because when that website is ready to transfer from stage to production, um, we're definitely going to have to make that DNS change. So that's the key to the whole thing. So Donna Matthews, uh, expect me to call you probably tomorrow so we can figure out if we can find the login. I think maybe a year ago or so, uh, you may have sent me that, but I can't find it in my email. So I'll talk to you about it tomorrow. Okay. Just, I just want to get that done and ready just so we don't get lag time when we get ready to go production. That's the most Sounds important good. thing. For them. Okay. And I'll right. suddenly understand Donna's retirement plan. She's going to hold out for a big payment for that domain. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? Said, let me read you what it says. It says, in the next phase, the big CB, CM, CMS developers will build a staging website, implement design without content, and run through a testing protocol. Website setup will depend upon the number of customers currently in the setup queue. So I think what I we should do is I don't know if you go through Miriam because she's the person that has been we have been working with. It looks like it's the next person, but I will forward you this email and then perhaps you can ask her or you can ask her to put you in touch with the person who's going to be our developer. Because that looks like I don't know how to answer that question. So I think I will I'm forwarding it that email to you, Dave. And then maybe you can ask them. Sure, absolutely. Um, how to do that. Okay. Um, okay. Yep. Thank you. So the email was sent to me July 29th. So now we're like a weeks into being in the queue. So hopefully it won't take too long. That's it. Dave, anything else? No, I'm good, Michelle. Thank you. All right. Uh, we Thanks, have a yeah. I have we have a discussion topic the image for Quarry Field billboard. Jay, you want to start with? Well, I mean, just to recap, anybody who wasn't on the last meeting, the uh, the current image on the Quarry Field billboard is uh, a year out of date, and so we decided it would be a good idea to come up with something more. Uh, current and perhaps more timeless. And um, we had hoped to have some initial ideas of what that might be either from images from the website or uh, 
suggestions from the uh, some of the economic development committees, the you know advertising committee or whichever the correct committee was. I'm guessing that a a week of no electricity and no internet has put that on the back burner. Um, well, Maria and I uh, have spoken, and Maria has also touched base with people on the um, marketing uh, subcommittee. Uh, one just to without being able to uh, create a, uh, an, uh, a visual. Uh, one thing that Maria and I discussed was sort of the top part of the new website from. Uh, from where the those buttons are and up, you know, the big background photo, which then has superimposed on it, the town logo and. Um, you know, just that section of the website that we could say, visit our new website, tuxedogov.org, and then underneath, we could say gateway to Orange County, something. I think, that, I think that's perfect. Yep, that sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just make sure we have a website to go to before we put it up. Yeah, I know. Marie and I were talking about today, yes. Right, I'm not, uh, and I'm not throwing rocks, that's just a, oh, no, yeah. a logistical. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so did we at ever this point is not up to us. Mm-hmm. So it's did we so ever reach an agreement um, that we're just going to use that billboard exclusively for town use and not commercial use? Correct. Uh, I don't think we made that agreement officially, but I don't think anybody's interested in getting into the billboard rental market. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree, Jay. And I know we talked about you know maybe letting the school use it or whatever but you know i think we ought to lock that in at some point what we're gonna i i kind of like the idea of dedicating it to eco dev especially right because those, that's that's the catalyst for um the future right and that's where we're going to do a lot of our communication so um i don't know i just was throwing that out there yeah maybe you we know. have um a visual sort of just you know draft it up and uh show you next meeting I mean, I think that if 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 the if either of the schools in Tuxedo, uh, you know, the Tuxedo Free School District or Tuxedo Park School express some interest, and in, we could talk about it if and when they do. But for now, I don't see any reason to do anything. Like that. Yeah, and I'll apologize for the one year existence of what's there because I get a bloody nose the second rung of a step ladder, so I couldn't take it down. But um, it's better than looking at bare plywood. So I hope we get something up there quick and oh uh, yeah, and again I'm 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 not throwing rocks. It's just you know. Yeah. No, I know. I'm j i am I just had to throw that in. <laughs> I get beat up over it. Not by you, Jay. So it sounds okay. like most of the artwork we're artwork we're proposing for this is is the website. You know, so we and I, I think the idea is a really good one that we're trying to promote this new website. Obviously it has this updated town logo, uh, this notion of tying into the Orange County tourism's, we're saying gateway to Orange County, you know, they have their saying, uh, live, work, play Orange County. I don't know if that needs to be there. It's just another idea we were bending about, but certainly, you know, if we get people to go to the website, uh, that's where you can keep it fresh. You know, the a billboard is going to be, uh, once you've seen it three or four times, it, you go eye blind to it anyway. But if we if it gets traffic to our website, that's that's what we're investing money in, and that's where you have uh, potential for updates. Obviously, every day. I agree. So as soon as like uh, Jay was saying and Maria, as soon as we have, uh, you know, the basically the home page ready to go. And uh, that could be the artwork for this billboard, maybe with just a few, maybe clearly highlighting the uh, the URL, which is simple enough, tuxedogov.org. Um, visit us at tuxedogov.org should be, you know, superimposed over the, the home page uh, artwork. And we should be pretty much ready to go. We just have to uh, make sure we have to get it into camera ready format and then CompuGraphs, which is the company Dave used, uh, 
it, their charge is $800, but it has to be camera ready. So we just have to get it into that format and send it up to them as soon as the website's live. So that'll be the yeah. next step is, is, uh, you know, getting the, the actual visual in a format for printing. Well, yeah, the good thing about that, oh, sorry. I was just going to say, whoever comes up with that, give it to me because I know how to put it into that extreme high resolution PSD format. So, Super. I was going to say that front picture is going to be a high resolution, whatever this one or whatever one ends up, or, you know, it's going to be high resolution because you need a 2000 megapixel. Right, exactly. Whatever. Okay. So. Do we have the ability to have a tear away or something so we can put the image up sooner and then take off the cover of the words that says visit us at our website or is that uh, not real um there's okay. options jay there is definitely options for that there is okay. i mean okay it's just a matter of just creating a different size banner and overlaying it on top of the the, you know, the, 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 the artwork that we're going to have as the base, right? So you could just do like a 24, 24 feet. I think that billboard is wide by say four feet high or three feet high on the bottom. Or you could add the URL later on. So I've talked about that before with uh, copy graphics. So it is an option. Oh, good. Okay. So then, I mean. So we can work on the main. Yeah, the, you know, the main artwork and make it look really pretty. And then we can launch that URL um, on a subsequent banner right over top. Right. I mean, then perhaps we do that. And then after, you know, pick the correct amount of time. We can, you know, change, we can keep the image and change whatever the. the that's, absolutely. And, and that, that's exactly what we had intended to do over a year ago and we never got to it. So it's a good point, Jay. And it is highly doable. Okay. Yeah. Anything else on the billboard? I think we're good for now. Okay. Next is public comments on agenda items. And, and uh, Jerry Matola has a comment. If you want to unmute him, Dave. Dave, can you unmute Jerry? Oh, there he is. He's unmuted. Go ahead, Jerry. Yeah, I got him unmuted. This is it's not, on, it's on, not on agenda items. It's at the end of the meeting that I have a right. public comment. Okay, very good. We'll get back to you then. Uh, Mary Kretzer, Kretzer, do you have a comment on the agenda on, on an agenda item? Yes, I have a question on an agenda item. Go ahead. I, I, I see that you're going to uh, have a resolution on hiring the, 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 the appraisers. I'm wondering, don't we have a town appraiser? Why can't he do this work? Why do we have to pay all this extra money for this? That's okay, good... we'll take that. We'll take that point up when we get to that resolution. Uh, when we get to that item. Thank okay. you. Okay, so the Any first other public comments on oh, agenda items? Sorry. Doesn't look like it. Okay. I'll consider that. We've asked for public comments on agenda items. So we're going to move to agenda item number one resolution to approve the reopening plan for Tuxedo Town Hall COVID 19 pandemic. Uh, is there any discussion uh, uh, by town board members? I've circulated this plan to all town board members and town employees. Uh, basically, we're following executive orders from the governor. Uh, these plans by nature need to be flexible and need to respond to changing conditions as they unfold. The plan that we put together is, is following the template that was uh, shared through New York Forward. And uh, we've been meeting with town uh, employees since the COVID-19 epidemic pandemic started. And I think we've successfully managed town business, both through a combination of 
of uh, online responding and uh, our outgoing messages on our phones, advising people how to contact everyone who works there. And town hall has been open with limited uh, availability uh, through signage outside and through appointments. And so this is an effort to move forward as, as the governor's plan is called, New York moving forward so that we clearly have open hours. Uh, this became really nece necessary with the reopening of the court on August 5th, which I understand went very well. And so that's what that's of the background behind this resolution. And I will again open the floor of discussion to town board members. You want us to put it up so people can see um, the document or no? Well, this is, this is a resolution by the town board. So uh, this has been circulated to the town board. And uh, uh, so I'm not sure, Maria, I mean, you know, you guys have had access to it for, uh, yeah, I would yeah. think at least. No, 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 I didn't mean it from me. I, I have it. Well, I this, just, is a, uh, this is an open to public discussion here. So oh, this okay. is the town board. Well, I can. It, I've read through it extensively. I think it's a very comprehensive document. It's in line yeah. with executive orders, and I think we just should proceed. Thank you. Yeah, I agree with Dave and Maria. So, Jay, if you don't have any further comment or questions, uh, uh, sorry, I'd like to I, uh, you guys have done a really good job of putting it together. So, I have nothing to add. Thank you. Um, so I guess I'm trying to make a motion to accept to uh, vote on this resolution to approve the reopening plan for Tuxedo Town Hall. Do I have a second? I'll second. I'll second. Sorry. Can you identify for Donna who seconded? Uh, Michelle Lindsay. Seconded by Michelle Lindsay, Donna. Uh, I'll take a roll call vote. Uh, I'll start with uh, Deputy Supervisor Michelle Lindsay. Hi. Uh, Maria May. Hi. Jay Weichka. Hi. Dave McMillan. Hi. And myself, Ken English. I. Okay. So the resolution to approve the reopening plan has passed unanimously. Thank you. Our second uh, agenda item: the res resolution approving Beckman appraisals. Proposal for reappraising state land. I'd like to open this with uh, discussion by town board members. I'd like to start with my own concerns. Uh, I'd like to first uh, review uh, with uh, uh, our town assessor, Jim Davies. I know he's done a lot of work on, on this uh, reappraising of state lands, and uh, we did have a, a uh, an interesting presentation by Beckman appraisals, and uh, I do want to further consider that with town board members. But I think uh, first we need to understand the work that Jim has done on this so that we uh, learn from his experience and also take that into consideration as to how the Beckman appraisals might add to that. But I think my first, my first, my next step would be that we get uh, have a comprehensive sit down with with uh, Jim Davies and understand the work that he's already done. And I'm opening the floor to the discussion with town board members. Um, yeah, I, I uh, would like to add a couple of other uh, questions. And, uh, let's see, Jim, maybe you can mute yourself and then we'll get to you. Just a lot of feedback. Thanks. Um, so my question for Jim will be sort of the timeline of everything. So say we hired uh, Beckman this year, how long will it take him or them to do the appraisal? And when would it be ready? And then once it's ready, when what's the timeline for publishing assessments and um, I think it's the beginning of the year and then those assessments if I understand it correctly would be used 
for uh, the taxes levied in 2022. So my question about timeline is if we hire them in 2020 and they finish in this year and and it's um, you know official or how long does it take for it to be official and when would we start seeing the tax revenues would it be the earliest 2022 or 2023 so that's one of my questions and also i would like to know uh given the work that jim's done already what uh increase in tax revenue we can expect those are my questions myself uh, well, the uh, you're right. It would be for the following year, so it would be for the twenty. The assessment increase would be for the twenty twenty one assessment roll, which would affect the school taxes in twenty twenty one for the Monroe Woodbury School District and the Tuxedo School District. Then it would affect the twenty two town and county bill. For the town. So, um, how long a process is it, and does the state need to accept it, or how does that all work? What happens is we usually need our uh, state land report done by mid April to be accepted for the tentative roll for May 1st. So May 1st is when the, the tax roll is published, right? For the everybody. Tentative, the tentative roll is May 1st. The final roll is July 1st. So we have that time between May 1st and July 1 to come to an agreement with the state on the tentative tax uh, on the final uh, state land assessment roll. Okay. So the changes that you made, um, were they uh, published May 1 and accepted by July 1. So they were accepted. Yeah, I raised the uh, state lands around almost 10 million dollars this year uh, in assessment wise. Excellent. Do you have a rough estimate on increase in tax revenue? Like that? I believe I sent emails out. I think only the town portion uh, was about $140,000. I sent emails to the all of the town board uh, with all the numbers off the top of my head I don't have in front of me, but that's uh, all depending on budgets and tax rate increases and so. Thank you. Yeah, that's a great estimate. Okay. Other town board members? Questions? Well. I'll, I'll bring up the question uh, that was raised in the comments. So, how come we're paying somebody else to do this? After you've done uh, I've research. done a lot of research, and I am not an expert in uh, vacant uh, vacant land. And you pretty much, if you're going up against New York State, you want an outside party representing you. If I represent the town, it will seem like a bias of it. Because obviously the best interests are me, rep you know, uh, me representing the assessment role. An outside party is uh, obviously a third party. And to follow on with one of the questions that uh, Michelle asked, do we think we're going to see? Do we think we're going to make money here, or I mean, do you think there's? More yeah, I think it will uh, absolutely pay for itself, and I think there's a lot more there uh, than what I raised already. Okay. So, uh, you, Jim, this is Ken English. Uh, so, yeah. some of the considerations that I remember from the presentation were, um, you know, that the uh, Beckman Group, I believe they're called uh, the Beckman Appraising Group, was really looking at individual parcels and uh, taking into consideration things like uh, are they lakefront? Are they, you know, uh, uh, how 
how I guess the word would be developable these properties would have been had they not been state lands, you know, topography, those kind of things, uh, general property value, even though these are state park lands. I guess uh, from a layman's point of view, it sounded like they were describing what the value would have been had they not been state parkland. Is that even semi-accurate what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So I guess from the work that you've, you've been doing, uh, admirably so, uh, by, by as you've, as you've uh, reported to us, a $10 million assessment increase, uh, uh, which is netting us uh, up to $140,000. I think that uh, speaks for itself to the uh, benefits of the town uh, on an ongoing basis. Um, uh, and we certainly take your uh, guidance that uh, this is, is expected to recoup the money. Uh, you know, obviously we're uh, considering a $35,000 investment in this kind of a service. Um, I think one of the, the main things uh, to the board I'm basically addressing right now, one of my concerns is just the, uh, you know, the fiscal uh, climate that's happening right now. You know, we're trying to deal with a number of issues that are uh, uh, affecting our budget moving forward. Uh, that, um, and I'm, I'm just not sure right now if, uh, if I'm understanding the, the calendar flow, what Jim was asking to address uh, Deputy Supervisor Lindsay's questions, um, if we're trying to authorize a study that would basically uh, come out in mid-April to the state uh, with, with uh, that needs to be presented on May 1st, obviously there's some timeline here that we need to make a decision on. I'm not so sure it's uh, urgent uh, today's meeting, but certainly uh, the clock is ticking so that this, uh, if we did go with this group, that they'd have enough time to prepare a report to meet these mid-April deadlines and obviously to submit something on May 1st. That seems to be a major consideration here. Over. Just as a, a point of information, um, it's it's thirty five thousand dollars plus expenses. Um, I spoke to them about what they thought that expense number would be, and they said not to exceed this, not to exceed five thousand dollars. So we're talking about a forty thousand dollar item here. Uh, this is Michelle. Would that be able to get put into the twenty twenty one budget? Jim, do you know? I mean, would we pay a completion? Uh, with uh, the payment into the 2021 budget? Probably not. No. Uh, well, it's more of a question for uh, our bookkeeper, I would assume. Right. We have to give them a $20,000 retainer for them to start oh. work. So I'm going to go. So we can just do a budget mod for that right now. Or whatever we decide. So it's twenty thousand now on the balance in twenty twenty one. Yes. Do we want to wait the, the for term, Jim to get back with some more info? I'm sorry, Jay. Sorry, the terms of the proposal are twenty thousand uh, dollars retainer, and then the. The balance due on submittal of the report. Which would be April not before December 31. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I, I don't know, and perhaps Dick can, can speak to this a little bit more. I don't know how long this process is going to take. I don't know if we start them tomorrow, they're done in a week, or if they're going to be needed every minute between now and April. Yeah, that was that was part of my question, too. Yeah, I, I probably didn't express it. Clearly enough, but yeah, so, I was just curious about the whole timeline, Jim. If we're going to engage this, um, I'm not certain we could do it today. I think I think we need to probably wait, discuss it a little more, like Ken had mentioned. But you, I think you're going to end. This is a question for Marissa too. Um, we're going to need a resolution for the budget modification for the retainer, correct? 
That's a question to Marissa, right there. Yeah, Marissa. Yeah, correct. Sorry, did you not hear me? Okay, so yeah. so yeah, Ken, I agree with you and uh, and your point that we probably can't delay this action for long, but I think we do have a little work to do before we actually put both those resolutions back on the agenda. Well, I think Jay raised a, a good question. I mean, is it if you authorize it today, do they need a week? Do they need through December? You know. Um, I, I think that would be helpful inf information for us to figure out as uh, we continue it to an analyze where we're going with, with department head uh, meetings on the budget. And uh, so, you know, I guess I'd really want to know when, when the absolute drop dead time is to make this decision because we could use more time to carefully consider it. And uh, uh, I would, I would welcome if Jay wanted to reach out to them and, and ask some of these questions that were just raised. Uh, I think that would help us get a little bit more information as to most a when does when does this decision absolutely need to be made and uh, and possibly you know uh, any other question board members have for this group. I, I'd be happy to reach out to them again. Um, uh, but the only question I've heard so far is basically time frame. Did I miss it? Did I miss another one? Well, I just uh, well actually, Jim answered the other question that I had, but um, about how much we can expect from the increase he was able to find, and he's saying that was one hundred and forty thousand, which is great. I remember asking them if, if this was an all or nothing proposal, whether they, they would consider analyzing a few of, I, I understand that the state properties are divided up as any other property, that there are certain lots and uh, that it's not just, well, the state owns all of this land within the town of Tuxedo. Uh, if I understood the response was that no, um, their recommendation was they would do um all of the properties in tuxedo but i don't know if if uh with jim's knowledge of of some of these parcels are there some that you might even indicate jim would be you know the most uh, uh fruitful ground so that would we consider a, a piecemeal approach are there several parcels that even just by looking at an aerial Google map or something, you'd say, wow, this is lakefront property. This is something, you know, uh, probably one of the parcels that would net us the most. I, I'm just trying to figure out, is there somewhere between a full out $40,000 investment or is there a way we could uh, try to target some of the properties that uh, would would make sense that, yeah, just even looking at a Google map, you'd say, this is probably a property that had some value uh, that would require this kind of an assessment over. Uh, I believe uh, right now we have each parcel per acre around $10,000. Uh, that's it per acre. Um, there's, we're fortunate enough to have I think six or seven lakes on state owned lands with a lot of um, frontage, which is buildable. Um, I think that's where our target area it is, but when we do the report, no matter what you do with the report, you have to do the whole thing uh, over. We can leave some the same, um, but you, no matter what the report is every year, it's, it's every parcel and you just don't change a particular one. Okay, okay, thank you for that. I think that did illuminate my thinking. So, you know, the report is on all the state lands, but if I'm hearing you correctly, Jim, we, we might be able to influence Beckman to narrow his analysis to um, uh, parcels that are lakefront possibly, or, you know, just to see if there's some wiggle room there between uh, a full out $40,000 investment or some somewhere along that continuum. Uh, maybe Jay, that's, that's uh, something you might be able to pursue with them just to see 
if there's some wiggle room in between there. Over. So, Jim, a uh, question from uh, Dale Matola. Can the state object to the valuation? And can they object to the, that valuation in future years as well? Oh, absolutely. Uh, they objected my tenant rule this year, and I sent them back a comparable sales analysis on vacant land. Um, yeah, they're going to dispute it. That's why we're kind of hiring or attempting to hire outside counsel to take care of that. And the leverage is in the third party. Um, yeah, so that's so my belief. Yeah. And okay. I, I believe there's a lot there to gain. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Dale. Good question. Kind of tagging on to that question. What once once it, uh, a, an assessment is been agreed upon and so called determined. Uh, I would imagine at that point, uh, uh, that's kind of a fixed uh, valuation and and that. You know, it's you can kind of count on it from then on. Is that correct, Jim? Uh, no, that is not the case. The state has the right to appeal it every year, just like any other taxpayer would. But usually, oh, okay, right. okay. agreement the state, um, they're going to they're gonna really uh, tear it apart. And when we come to an agreement with the state, they usually stick by it, but they do have the right to grieve it every year on each parcel. Understood. Thank you. Understood. So, Jim, the um, the ten million dollar increase in assessment that was accepted this year. Without any objection or. Oh, no, I got a call from Albany the day after Easter and they were not happy, um, but I was able to smooth things out. Good job. Thank you. I don't have any further questions at this time. So, Jim, like anybody else, you're saying they can bring a certiorari case and we've got to spend money to. Uh, additional legal consultants, like we do any other tertiary, uh, that you that brought forward to you, right? Yes, I, I've dealt with this. I also work in the town of Morristown, and they've usually before the uh, the state actually they'll file agreements with the town against the state lands. They don't want to go to court either against the town. We usually come to a mutual agreement to you know. Not have lawyer fees on both sides. Right, right, exactly. Thank you. I guess uh, I'm reneging on my no further questions. Uh, promise a second ago. Um, I, I guess I'm just uh, you know looking at the good work that you've done and, and gotten have gotten a ten million dollar increase in the assessment. Um, I know you you feel uh, you've stated Jim that there's there's still meat on that bone to go after. Uh, I'm just wondering, you know, uh, what, what the optics are that we're coming right back after we just got them to agree to a $10 million increase of assessment. I mean, obviously this is, is, uh, conjecture or whatever opinion. Uh, I, I, I'm, and my first impulse is that, you know, look, we just gave you $10 million. You're coming back again right now. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just. Curious as to, you know, would that be perceived as a hostile stance, or, or I'm not sure about that. Uh, I probably didn't raise them high enough. That's why they didn't come back. Uh, that's why they didn't file a grievance because I probably I raised the state lands 39 percent, and uh, they kind of gave me some flack about it and. When I went back with the comparable sales analysis, they, didn't, they pretty much agreed with everything. So, uh, they, they probably should be even higher than what they are to be totally. So, honest. the appraisal percentage increase was 39%? Yes. Thank you. Was that across the board on all parcels, or did you just? Just, uh, certain parcels to increase. That was on all state land parcels. Oh, wow. 
Thank you. So it sounds like, although, you know, you, we're kind of looking at parcels that might be lakefront, those kind of factors, you know, that just make them more quote unquote developable again, even though that we're talking state land. Um, uh, it's still factored across all of the acreage in total, uh, this 39%. It wasn't like, okay, this parcel's going up 20%, this parcel's going up 40%. It's, it, I, I think as you were describing it earlier, it's, uh, it, it's a, a, a comprehensive assessment of all the state lands as if there weren't individual uh, plots. Is, is that somewhat correct what I'm saying? Based on they were all one, but Mr. Uh, well, the proposed uh, study will be on each individual parcel. I thought if I did it as one, I did it, I raised the assessments pretty much to the minimum uh, amount per acre um, just to avoid conflict with the state and legal fees and a whole grievance. Uh, Pretty much, we've been shorted for a while on everything up in the bar. I mean, Remember you mentioned that a minimal increase. I'm surprised that 39% would be considered like a minimal increase. Oh, oh you're muted. Go ahead, Jen. I'm saying not according to the Department of Real Property. They were not happy at all with that. Well, I remember from the presentation, they said that sometimes they actually lower some assessments yeah. uh, for, you know, uh, cliffs and, you know, very steep properties, but then increase it a lot more on lakefront. So, you know, as long as they do that kind of analysis, I guess uh, the state will see the process. Sure, there's going to be, uh, you know, some unusable acreage that's probably worth, you know, maybe nothing, but there's a gain on, you know, uh, the buildable property, which will outweigh the, you know, residual right. land. Right. Right. I mean, and, and this is, uh, I mean, this is one of the reasons that we want to bring in the experts on rezoning, sorry, wrong word, reassessing these state lands. And, you know, we we got 39% and we didn't get any significant arguments. They weren't happy, but they couldn't argue the point. So what we want to do is get the experts to squeeze everything we can because, frankly, it's our money. These, the, the issue is not that our increase was so big. The issue is that our assessments were lower than they should be by a significant amount. Yeah, so 39% is arbitrary in that case. That was the number that Jim came up with, and it sounds like he was given a conservative estimate to make it go through, which sounds reasonable. Yeah. Absolutely, Jay. Spot on. Okay, cool. All right, so Ken, do uh, you want to push this to the next meeting? Yeah, I think I think we need. Uh, um, I'd like Jay to contract contact Beckman again. Um, he was going to ask about the. Uh, I believe it was the. Um, I've got the ask frame. about the, the time frame and schedule to see. A, how long we think it's going to take, and B, how much wiggle room we have. And also look at the question of whether there's any, whether it's a reasonable question to to basically split the contract and only look at some property and not and at this time. Although my guess is that answer to that is no, but I'll ask the question and get a real answer. Okay. And then uh, obviously uh, all town board members can review the notes from the uh, actual presentation. If, if it does trigger any further questions, get them to Jay's ASAP. 
And okay. uh, I think we can consider this uh, uh, for final consideration at the next meeting. Uh, and, unless unless they came back to us and said, you know, you you could. I mean, obviously, as as I'm having budget meetings with town uh, with uh, department heads, you know, it would the longer we could delay this this decision, the more I'd understand the impacts of what the requests are from department heads and what we see, what we think we have pending for 2021. Anyway, you know. Um, I'm, but I'm I would still, offer. Sorry, I'll let you finish. I was just going to say, you know, I'm a little uh, concerned about, uh, you know, this. The, uh, although I, I don't see many uh, major uh, uh, revenue hits to the town of Tuxedo, um, and we're trying to get as much as we can out of the state. Obviously, I am concerned about other taxes that are going to hit. Uh, that I expect to hit people like school taxes and, and other issues of just, uh, you know, anything that would uh, possibly uh, affect our town's bottom line. You know, it, spending $40,000 obviously has to be well thought out. And uh, so over. Yes. Go ahead, Jeff. Great. But, Great. but my point would be spending $40,000 tomorrow to make just say we can get another 140,000 a year in perpetuity or semi perpetuity is a no brainer. No, uh, it, it is. Uh, I mean, I, I think also one thing to consider, you know, what Jim did obviously didn't trigger tertiary uh, conflict and, and adjudication or, you know, of, of fighting all that, you know, uh, I know the town and, and other towns have, uh, you know, try to avoid that those kind of litigations like the plague because you know that's another money sucker. So, you know, it, it, yeah, it's it's a call at the end of the day. Um, do we do it this year? Do we wait another year because uh, they just gave us an increase? I think those are all things we we all have to ponder. But yeah, I I would add that even if they did object wholeheartedly after we went through this. At least we reset the bar on a new standard of assessment for those properties and we can keep shoving it at them every year. Correct Jim. Yeah. Okay. So that's an investment. So let's all ponder it for we have 2 weeks. We'll get we'll get some results. Uh, some answers when Jay communicates with them for a final time and. Uh, Again, if anybody has any questions to add, get them to Jay as, as soon as possible. And okay. I think our target would be to review this at the next town board meeting, hopefully for a final time. Right. Okay. Just looking at my schedule, um, if people can make it as soon as possible by lunchtime tomorrow, that would be appreciated. Okay. We'll do. Thanks. I doubt I'll have any different questions, but thank you for that. Thanks, Jim. Next on the, um, well, we don't have another agenda item, but under new business, we have uh, John Banya who's going to help us understand uh, two projects, or actually three projects that that uh, he will talk about. And we received a letter from the town of Ramapo regarding a new project. Uh, that will be, well, I'll let John explain it, but the town board uh, needs to sub, uh, submit a response by Wednesday and the highway superintendent needs to submit a response and in discussion with Howard, he suggested that we uh, draft the letter with the highway superintendent, but I'll let John explain it. John Banyo. Yes, I'm here. Thanks. Okay, the first the first project is a um, an audiovisual production center for Jehovah's Witnesses, and it's a large project. It encompasses 249 acres total, of which only seven are in Tuxedo. Uh, the Tuxedo portion is a sliver uh, on the northwest corner of the site, which does abut um, Sterling Mine Road. 
the um, the site plan that I saw, it doesn't really show any development on that seven acres. Um, the rest of the development, it, it is extensive. It's, it uh, encompasses 880,000 square feet. And part of what they're proposing to build, uh, in addition to the studios, a clinic, a cafeteria, are 645 residential units and uh, 1,255 parking spaces. Uh, nothing that I read defines how many people are going to be in residence, uh, but you can maybe assume that at most two per residential unit, because they're all one bedroom or studios. There's no three bedroom units, two bedroom units. Um, what they're going to require from the uh, Tuxedo Planning Board is a freshwater wetlands permit and a driveway permit from uh, the town highway superintendent, Rob. Um, now, the letter that we received uh, re requested our approval for the Ramapo Town Board to serve as lead agency. Um, so we had our planning board attorney, Kelly Norton, draft a letter, uh, which consented to that, that the Ramapo Town Board would serve as lead agency but the Tuxedo Town Board uh, be designated as an involved agency. The plan this was a, no, it says Town Board. Oh, oh, okay. The letter that Kelly wrote says Town Board. Okay. Be designated as involved agency. So I signed this letter last uh, Wednesday and uh, Deborah mailed it to uh, Mr. Specht, who is the supervisor in Ramapo. And um, she also indicated a number of our concerns. It's a two-page letter. Um, she, I did question, she uh, agreed that it was uh, proper for her to go out under my signature as opposed to say Ken's signature. Um, so that should be at Ramapo by now. Um, so that's kind of the summary of, of that project. The, the one thing that we have to be careful of, uh, if you're familiar with Sterling Mine Road, very close to where Eagle Valley and the St. Joseph's driveway is, there's a, a temporary gravel road with a gate off to the left as you're heading toward Ringwood. Um, that is a temporary access to this site, the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses site. And it's not very clear on the site plan, but it, it kind of shows an, an exit from the site uh, utilizing that, what is now a temporary road. So, and it doesn't really clearly show the, uh, any main access to the site. Um, they are leaving, uh, again, according to this very basic site plan, uh, they are leaving a, a lot of trees uh, between the area that they're developing and the road, Sterling Mine Road. So they're setting it back. Um, but what exactly that uh, existing gravel road is going to become, that's, that's a question for us. And that's going to be the subject of the, um, the driveway permit, as, as they're calling it. Okay, so John, so that sounds to me like a type two seeker. Is that Ramapo lead agency? Ramapo would be the Ramapo would be the lead agency. Yes, we okay. we talked <clears throat> we talked to Kelly and Rick Golden about this, and they said that since the bulk of it is in Ramapo, we wouldn't have a, a prayer of trying to declare ourselves lead agency. Okay, yeah, it makes sense. Um, I guess Jay, that's where you could segue in. I read your concern about traffic flow. Um, it doesn't sound like you know. It sounds to me like that would be part of the type two seeker action that Ramapo would have to uh, involve themselves in. So that means, John, that the town of Tuxedo as an involved agency would have some input, correct? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. So John, why, why, is, um, why is the town board the involved agency and not the planning board? I mean, does that change things or do we work together Michelle, on that? Michelle, in the past, the town board's always been lead agency. Um, on most of those, most of those kinds of actions, the planning board is always going to be a, you know, uh, in a consultant 
uh, role for us, but the town board actually has the, the power per se, quote unquote, um, especially if they're lead agency. But, you know, it makes sense. I've seen it a, a bunch of times, especially with a, a tuxedo farms. Our town board has always been lead agency, not the planning board. Yeah, the, Marissa? The, the town board has authority to act for the town. The planning board is, you know, appointed and all the rest of it. And so that's why it works right. that way. Yeah, I was just going to say, adding on to what Jay just said, it's, it's authority acting for all of your municipal boards. Um, yes, the planning board is the one with the authority to issue um, the permits, as we discussed before. Um, but the town board is making those decisions on behalf of the rest of the municipality. And I do need to just, sorry, my cat is just running through. Um, I apologize. Um, <laughs> always long, right? Um, do need to disclose, I do believe that Howard discussed with this with Michelle today, but just so everybody's aware, our firm, not myself, nor Howard, somebody else in our firm, is special counsel on this project for Ramapo. We're not, you know, their attorneys all the time, um, but just for certain projects. So they are helping them do the seeker review. Um, so he did receive, his name is George Lefto, he did receive uh, the comments from Kelly Naughton on Friday, and I believe that there was another letter sent that Howard worked on today with uh, with Rob Dahlbaum that got sent out. And, you know, they're they're looking at all those conditions that have been requested with regard to traffic um, and all those comments that are coming through. Um, George is going to disclose that tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, during their meeting where they're going to discuss it as well. But, we don't envision it being an issue because it's just a seeker review. It's not, we're not representing a developer or anything. Um, so it should be okay if it becomes an issue at any point, if there's something that's contested, you know, we'll get to that point. But right now, we think it's Well, we have the planning board attorney, right? Mm -hmm. And another layer, yes. Um, did you say that Howard worked directly with Rob Dolbaum on the letter that he needs to submit? I believe that he did. I saw a letter today. So I thought we were going to discuss that tonight. Um, I haven't I been. Think in... didn't go out yet. I saw a, a draft this afternoon. I haven't been in that loop at all on the Rob Dolbaum letter uh, on the highway issue. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. I can't really speak to that one. Yeah, I think, uh, Marissa, I think it would be great if Howard has been working with Rob. Mm -hmm. Um, for him to circulate the draft of the town board. Sure, yeah, I'm trying, to find, I'm trying to find it right now. I can send it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just on a technical oh, side, I'm having trouble hearing. There's a, there's a, a very persisting echo. I'm not sure if you're all hearing yeah, it. The echo is coming from Marissa's side. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's I, not, think, it's, I think it's, it's my it's your fault. <laughs> It's not your fault. It's just lag in the mm -hmm. network. Um, yes, hold on. Let me. I will send it to everybody really quick. It basically reiterates. It's much shorter, but it reiterates what um, was said from uh, Kelly on. But with regard to driveway issues. Now I I don't know about the letter from Rob, but our response had to be in by August twelfth, which is Wednesday at four o'clock. So I don't know whether uh, that letter has gone out yet, but uh, we have only two more days to do it. And l let me ask Marissa a question. Um, sure. We mailed it, U.S. Mail. And when I was looking over some of my notes, I noticed that Ramapo requested it either by fax or by email. Mm -hmm. So is, is that going to be a technicality that we should email it to them? Going forward, if they requested that, like I said, I'm not the attorney who's lead on that, but if they request that going forward, go ahead. Um, but I know from the attorney who's, who's in charge, uh, George, he said he received it on Friday. Um, he sent me a copy of the you know, return receipt and whatnot. So you're good. So, okay, <laughs> so you said you're saying he received it already. He received it, yes. And he passed okay, it very... on to the planning consultant um, for the town. All right, so we will not email it tomorrow then. No, you don't need to. You know, okay, going good. forward, if you have any additional comments or you know other correspondence that needs to go through, sure, but um, you're good for okay, purposes of that. Yeah, does the letter, I mean, 
It seems to me it's more than a driveway permit when you're talking about the size of this project and the potential traffic implications. So is that addressed in the letter that, well, I guess we'll see it, the letter. Yeah, that I'm sending you, I'll read it, but hold on, I have my computer saying no as well. Um, it's very short, it, I'm sending it as we speak, but it says, Dear Supervisor Specs, I am the duly elected Highway Superintendent of the Town of Tuxedo, and that in that capacity, write to you as an involved agency in your secret review of this project. I am most interested in the traffic issues that may result from the project and my granting of any driveway or highway permits that may be applied for. I have reviewed the proposed scope of the traffic analysis that was included in the environmental assessment form. I would like to be copied on all matters pertaining to that study, so I may provide our own comments as appropriate. We should have that. So, you, so there is a, a preliminary traffic? From my understanding, yeah, they have a scope written, um, but they haven't done it yet. So that's, a draft, that's part a, of what they're seeking comments on. Okay. It's, it's a draft scope at this point. The draft scope, so it's even more draft than what I just said. Right. So draft scope, then the scope gets approved, then the studies get done, then we look at the results and see if there are any additional studies needed because they found something we didn't like, et cetera. But we're actually many... involved in scoping, right? Yes, yes. That, yes. Was, yes. That, was a large, that was a large part of uh, Kelly's letter, things that we uh, requested to be added to the scope. Oh, great. Because there's environmental issues, there's endangered species, the bat is there, and uh, there's, there's a lot of involved agencies on this one. So, so what, I, had, what I recall from my years on the planning board years ago was, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but because Ramapo would be lead agency in, a, in this particular, which I believe would be a type two action. Um, their standards in type two don't have to jive with ours. Um, so they don't have to adopt what we would have brought if it was a type two uh, as uh, with us as lead agency, correct? I mean, they could just scope their concerns with disregard to what ours are. I, I, can't, re I can't really answer that, I, I'm, I don't know. Okay. And theoretically, they could do that. It's not really what you're supposed to do on your seeker. You're supposed to take into account everything anybody submitted to you. And if you don't deem it relevant, you explain why. Um, so if, if that were to happen, that would be what would happen. But yeah, well, at, just, at the yeah, scoping I... stage, pretty much you include everything that anybody talks about, unless it was like, you know, the sky is yellow when it's not that sort of thing. Well, I just, um, but, I, I, yeah. <laughs> I just remember them saying something like, no agency is bound by an action on another agency's type two list. So our traffic problem, for instance, which we, and Jay, you brought that up in an email earlier today, uh, might be scoped completely different with concerns um, that will, you know, go uh, go unnoticed. Unless they, unless as an involved agency, they work with us. So there's some concerns there. Well, when Jeff Banyo and Kelly Button and I had a conference call, we specifically addressed our traffic concerns to the point where I don't know if it's been added to either letter, but you know, consideration of a traffic light, a left turning lane. I mean, there has to be traffic mitigation there because there clearly is going to be an increase in traffic. Oh, absolutely. I, I, just, I just have a question. Uh, so have these letters now secured our options for future comment and influence? Because obviously there's going to be multiple studies. This is a very preliminary draft as what I'm hearing. But it seems like these are letters that are due by August 12th, obviously uh, two days. Um, is the point here tonight that these letters have secured those options for comment and influence in the future? Over. I, I would say yes, from our perspective. All right, cool. Correct, yeah, they were at, like we said, we're in the preliminary stages, but it's important to be involved at every stage, especially because if you're setting the scope for something, 
you can't really go back later unless there's a real, real problem. Um, you can under certain conditions, but really right now is where we're setting up everything that's going to be studied for later. Um, so this is arguably so, the most important part to be involved in. So we've we've thrown our hat in the ring, and and now we we will be an involved agency that needs to be uh, included in all the messaging and and information dissemination, and really that's where we're at in this process. That uh, that's the only action we can really take at this point, and that we have. Over. I would I would say that's the case. Yes, yeah. that's okay. my understanding of it. Uh, the only question I still have uh, apparently is that is, is are we positive that uh, the letter from Rob Dolbaum is either in the mail or will be by the deadline? Over? I believe it's in the mail. I will double check with um, the secretary in the morning and make sure. But from what I can see on our e-file system, it was sent out. So okay. I will double check so, with her first thing in the morning. So it sounds like John was also going to update us on another project. If we can move that forward, I'd appreciate it. Okay, the other project is uh, an expansion at St. Joseph's home. Uh, now this project is entirely in Ramapo, but the access road to the existing site is uh, off of Sterling Mine Road, which is obviously a portion of that access road is in Tuxedo. But all the development is in Ramapo, and it's on the existing site, and uh, it's nowhere near as large as the Jehovah's one. It's a 20,000 square foot addition uh, to hold 24 additional beds, nursing beds, and it uh, involves also a 3,700 square foot uh, detached house with five beds. Currently, uh, St. Joseph's has 31 residents. Now, the confusing thing is, and, and one of the Ramapo Planning Board's consultants questioned this also in documentation that I saw, um, the applicant is saying that the population will not increase, which he didn't understand and I don't understand, unless they're abandoning the existing facility, which they didn't say they were. Um, so that's one confusing thing to me. Um, the town line, the Tuxedo town line, is along the northwest property line of St. Joseph's home, up on top of the hill. And of course, as I said, the access road. Now, Kelly Norton also wrote a letter to Mr. Speck, the supervisor of Ramapo. And this one went out, uh, Ken, under your signature. Now, hopefully you've seen this one. Yes. Yeah. You have. Um, I don't know whether this one has the um, August 12th date on it or not. And it's a very short letter. It's a one-page letter uh, expressing our concerns, the town's concerns. Uh, point of clarification, the access road uh, John, is it just for construction or is no, it? No, no, no. It's, it's an existing access road to the existing facility. It's right across from Eagle Valley Road. Right. I actually uh, drove up there the other day. Yes. Okay. So uh, is, it, is there an improvement to that road or um, it's just existing and that's the way it would remain? There was no indication that they're going to change the road at all. Or improvement, okay. widen it, nothing like that. Because obviously, says, even if even if they did add residents, none of these residents have cars. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I I have a, a point of information. I don't know this for a fact at this location, but uh, a lot of the standards for residential care, the more modern standards, no longer uh, see room sharing is being appropriate for grown-ups. So if they're doubling the number of beds, they may simply be taking roommates and putting them in separate rooms. That very well might be the case. That's a good now, point. Like I said, I don't know if that's what they're doing, but that's a possible explanation. Right, right, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, Maria, you looked like you were trying to say something there, but you were on mute. 
Go ahead, Ken. I was just saying, uh, you know, just tearing the description, it sounds like actually pretty low impact. Uh, you know, uh, a 3,700 uh, square foot detached house with five beds and uh, 20,000 square foot uh, basically nursing home facility with 24 new beds. As you said, you know, these aren't people that are mobile and uh, I, I'm not seeing much of a traffic concern. I drove back there. It's, it's certainly set back this property and um, are there concerns that I'm not understanding, John, That, or, or is this just basically informational to the town board to make us understand that we have these two issues before the town of Ramapo? In the, uh, the letter that Kelly wrote for your signature, she mentions traffic, um, and she probably overstated it. Uh, she said yeah. due to the anticipated significant increase in traffic, I don't know if that's really going to happen. Right. And the other thing she mentioned is that there are propane and oil tanks that are going to be relocated. And uh, she, she emphasized secondary uh, spill prevention. Containment. Right. Yeah. Right. Spills or leak uh, containment. Right. So, yeah, that's what I recall. And uh, it seems like, uh, as you're describing, you know, uh, no. Uh, Basically, making sure we're we're raising concerns uh, so that later down the road, you know, they've been heard. So, as an adjoining property uh, owner, I don't know if well, we don't own the the property, but um, hopefully we'll be informed by Ramapo as to uh, how things are progressing through their boards and permitting process. Yeah, so that mm -hmm. almost sounds like a negative deck to me going to happen there, right, John? I would That's think not so. A, yeah, it's not a big enough project, really. And yeah, I, I don't see that Ramapo is going to have any problems with this. Yeah, because they're not taking any property off the rolls, the tax rolls, because it's on their existing property. Okay, so it's just an FYI to us, and like Ken mentioned or Kelly did, she's representing the town's concerns back to, uh, um, to Ram to Ram to Ram town of Ramapo. Okay, fine. So that's all I have on that one. Thank you, John. Yeah, that was excellent. Thank you very much. Okay, no problem. Well, I think that was under the new business, right, Michelle? And I, I don't know of anything else that we considered for that. Well, the only thing would be uh, the site plan review for Echo Lake Dam. John just wants to give us a heads up about that. Okay, I, I can address that one. That's on our agenda for tomorrow night. And um, on the agenda, it shows it as two separate items. And uh, Kelly and Sean Hoffman, our engineer, uh, recommended that we condense it into one item with both issues because you really can't do one without the other. And um, I uh, am going to suggest to the board that we hold a public hearing on this one, uh, hopefully at our September meeting, because people in the East Village uh, will be concerned with this project since they were impacted when the dam broke during Hurricane Irene. So um, this is a, 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 I'm sorry, John, just for clarification for the record. This is a project that's going to rebuild the Echo Lake Dam, correct? Correct, and put a new bridge over the uh, outfall. Okay. And they're separated by about 3,900 feet. The dam is, is upstream of the new proposed bridge. Um, the bridge is based, the new bridge is basically in the same place, slightly, slightly different location. So we will not be approving anything tomorrow night um, other than hearing from the applicants and scheduling the public hearing, hopefully for September. Ooh. Yeah, I think you're right about the concern from people in East Village, uh, you know, for them to be able to come to the public hearing or to see something ahead of time so that they can comment would be great. Well, we'll get the um, the site plans posted so they can review those. Um, 
this has completed uh, Seeker. Uh, back last summer, the planning board um, uh, consented to having the DEC be lead agency. And the, D, the DEC has completed the Seeker process. And they've actually issued the permit to build the dam, their permit, um, from the state. Now, that doesn't approve. They still have to get site plan approval. But they do have the permit. Uh, and seeker from uh, from the state DEC. Now, who who owns that property? Is that privately owned by the Mortimers, or is that state property? No, no, it's the historical society. Okay, okay. Oh. Orange County Historical Society, correct? No, no. Huh? Uh, uh, let me see. No, I, I don't have my notes. Uh, on that one, but it, it's not it's not the Orange County Historical Society, I don't think. I guess I, I, I you know, I mean, I guess I probably would like to know why they want to rebuild this dam. Is there some um, is there there's some there's, is it for is it for you know um, agriculture reasons? Is it for no, fauna and flora or? Well, it's flood it's flood control there is no dam there now it's yeah no it's down and yeah i know so so that property it's flooding because the dam is no longer there i have it okay i got it and the dam will have a controlled outflow uh to hopefully uh prevent uh any downstream flooding oh so it'll have like a weir at a certain level right, right. okay gotcha The Thruway Authority does not have to be involved. They haven't been involved, and they don't have to be. I, we, we checked on that. OK. All right, thanks, John. Thank you, John. Okay. Are, are there, John, are there yeah. um, uh, analysis fees, uh, you know, that in this site plan approval process? I mean, do you, do you foresee uh, any uh, expenses to the town that uh, you know might might have to be recovered or anything just to even analyze and approve the site plan. Um, since it's it's a, a not a well, it's a private. I don't know if this historical society is a foundation or whether they whether they can reimburse the town or not. I I don't know. That's a good question um, because obviously I mean, you are. Our engineer and our planner reviewed these projects. Right. I mean, going forward, are, are there further uh, concerns and, and uh, analysis? I mean, you know, being that DEC is the lead agency and has issued a permit for a, a, a approved a permit, I guess. And uh, you know, I'm sorry, I don't. Uh, I'm learning about the whole process of site plan approval, but. Uh, you know, obviously, we want to be concerned. Uh, you know, I would think structurally, this is going to be a much better position than what when the dam failed. I, I would imagine that was a very outdated uh, type of design that at this, this day and age wouldn't possibly be approved. So I, I'm assuming, with a big assume, that this is uh, uh, structurally much sounder and safer for residents in Tuxedo and. Uh, I guess I'm just questioning, you know, um, you know, I just don't, I, I just want to make sure that we're not uh, laying out a lot of money for analysis that, you know, may or may not be necessary. I don't know. I, I asked uh, Sean Huffman this morning <clears throat> because in his report, he didn't talk at all about the design criteria for the dam. And I said, who did that? Somebody had to do it. And there's a, a state agency that uh, gets involved in these dam permits, and they evaluate the design criteria for the dam, for any dam built in New York State, and issue the permit. So uh, Sean did not have to get involved in that. He did, had, had no input on the design of the dam. The state agency okay. had that. And hopefully, you know, that's that's the right course of action that, you know, they have re responsible people who, uh, who uh, you know, analyze that. So, okay, I, you know, I'm just, of course, always trying to look at the bottom line and, and uh, you know, um, 
obviously we want uh, residents to weigh in on this, um, but also, you know, we don't want to overanalyze it, uh, you know. So that's just my concern about, uh, you know, the appropriate use of our consultants. Let me leave it at that. Sean, Sean said this, uh, this damn agency is, is a good one. He has confidence in the work that they do. So he feels, uh, without delving into it really at all, that the, uh, the design of the dam is adequate. Thank you. That's very comforting. Appreciate it. Okay. Any other questions for John? I'm good. Good. Okay. Thank you again, John. Okay. No problem. Pleasure working with you. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Okay. Um, I don't know if you want to put this uh, under old business, but we were going to ask Marissa for an update on a response to the Ren Fair. Oh, it's related related to the overtime expense. Right. Related to what? Overtime expense for the police. That oh, yeah. I have not been updated on that, so I will have to give you uh, information tomorrow. I did not clue me in as to that. I think the point was that we needed to give them a response. Um, Donna might remember uh, that they were asking for an extended time to pay. Okay. Yeah. I will check into that and get back to you in the morning. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Ken, you are now, unless there's any other new business. I hope not because to... I'm about to pass out. Okay. Well, it's department head update time. I'm not even sure who's on on the phone call anymore. I can't see any of that information. Anymore. Well, Rob, Rob Dahlbaum is not on the call. Um, Donna, do you have anything? No, we're just plugging along, and uh, the town hall is open for business. It's going very well. Taking temperatures, signing people in. Um, the upstairs people go around back and enter through the back, and it's going very well. Well, I want to thank you very much for all the work you guys are doing over there under this duress that you have to exist with. So kudos to the whole thank staff you, as well as you over there. Thank you. Second Dana. that. Yeah, thank sure, you. Thank Dana. you. And Marissa and everybody. Um, we do not have Dave Makish on the call, nor do we have the chief of police. So it looks like we have an abbreviated uh, department head update. Okay, so there we go. Um, Unless, let me un oh. let me unmute some of these callers. Maybe one of them is a chief of police or Dave Makish. Are you on one of those phone lines? Doesn't seem like it. Okay, go ahead, Michelle. No, okay, so then the next item is public comments. And I believe okay. Jerry Matola had one. Jerry Matola, Jerry Matola, you have the floor. Um Last Thursday morning, my wife was backing out of her and she ran into Goldilocks's three friends. Um, and it seems they're on Southside quite a bit. And we have a lot of young children there. Um, is there a way to stay can tranquilize the bears and move them? Without well, anybody Jerry, getting hurt, Jerry, we've so we're having the same exact problem up here, um, you know, north of you on Nursery Road, and I've engaged. Uh -huh. the, I've engaged the DEC so many times. They've come here. They've actually uh, they had to shoot a bear just recently because it had a broadhead stuck in its spine and it was paralyzed. But they said they will not. They will not tranquilize or try to deter any of the wildlife around here and that we need to learn to live with them. And every time I call them, that's the answer that I get, especially with a uh, complete with a pamphlet on how to live with these animals. I'm not just talking about the bears. I'm talking about a plethora of, of fox. 
that are also up here on the hill with me. I'm sure you see them. Uh -huh. Some of them are in, in very ratty shape. I've trapped a couple and brought them to wildlife rehabilitators. But, you know, the, the bear problem seems to be uh, everywhere all of a sudden in, the, in, in tuxedo proper. And like I say, they say, take your bird feeder down, take your garbage cans in, learn how to live with these animals. So I don't know if the town board could ever direct anybody to tranquilize a bear. They're just not going to do it. Will anybody else have any input? I mean, we're all living with this problem. Um, and they're in my yard every single day. And I get, and the thing is, I had to put in so many cameras and motion detector detected lights. So I'm aware that they're there because we don't know when we're going to step out of the garage and find mama and her two babies. So for my dog no was just barking, Dave, and uh, during this meeting, and I went to get him, and there was a bear in my yard. They're yeah. they're in my yard all the time as well. Now they they are getting out. Of, it is getting out of control, Jerry. It is. I mean, I've watched these bears proliferate in the last twenty years, like everyone else. But it seems that your neighborhood and my neighborhood seem to be the favorites around here. And I know of at least seven different bears that are there pretty much every other day in, in some sequence. Uh, fortunately, we've never had any issues with them behaviorally, fortunately, but I just know it's only a matter of time. And I hope the DEC doesn't wait until someone is in. So I don't know if there's much that the town board can do. Even, even Ken could reach out to them. I'm not sure at this point. Well, what I know about it is, you know, there's degrees of nuisance that have to be documented for bears, you know, and as far as, you know, a bear walking by, you know, is uh, is not even a nuisance. Did, did, did they go in your garbage? Did they, you know, uh, did they break into a home? You know, uh, so there's a checklist as to, you know, how they designate the, the problem and, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty high threshold for actually trying to relocate a bear from what I know, and I'm not trying to purport to be any kind of an expert on this, but right. I will also say living in Laurel Ridge, you know, it's, it's, as, as it's been mentioned here a couple of times, it's all throughout Tuxedo, throughout the state parks, and, and I have photos on, on my phone from just last week of a bear in the garbage of one of my neighbors. A big part of it is when you put your garbage out, you know, luckily I'm able to put my garbage out pretty much just before the garbage truck comes. But anything earlier than that, I know the garbage will be scattered all throughout the neighborhood. And, uh, you know, luckily most of our residents seem to get it. But uh, I know some people really have a challenge putting the garbage out just before the uh, the truck comes. And, you know, that's a whole other challenge, and, I, and I'm, I'm not sure if there's any easy answer for that. Yeah, so the DEC says it's human behavior modification. And then don't forget, our police are equipped with bear deterrence. So, and I'm sure you you might have seen them in use. Uh, they have rubber, rubber shotgun bullets. But in, in my experience watching them shoot the bears, um, the bear moves about 100 feet, then comes right back after the initial sting. So I think the police have even become numb <laughs> to shooting these things from the floor. So, but just keep that in mind, if you have one that rates high on the nuisance scale, keep a record and notify the police. Yeah, that's what I was going to suggest. I mean, uh, you know, if you've made complaints, Jerry, and, and it's, uh, you know, all, it, it's really a culmination of these reports that's ever going to lead to any action. Right, and I, I highly suggest say, the. Go ahead, please. Sorry, go ahead. Finish up. No, I'm done. Yeah. Okay, I got to say that you brought up a a very critical point, Ken, and that is that that the bears hang out when they can get a snack. So if you have neighbors who aren't controlling their garbage, that's the first problem that has to be solved. And I know that's an easy thing to say. But there are bear proof trash cans and, and all the rest of it, and that may be a necessity. And I'm no fan of the bears. I'm not, you know, I'm not the big whisperer here. Just. And of course, bird feeders are a big no no. Totally. So we don't have if one. anybody has bird feeders, we might actually need to do uh, uh, a town ordinance that uh, 
totally outlaws bird feeders uh, at any other season other than the dead of winter. And even then, it's an attraction. Because bears really don't truly hibernate, black bears. Uh, they, they can be active even in the winter. Oh, yeah, I've seen that plenty of times. They just never go to sleep. Yep. Black bears are not true hibernate. So anyway, Jerry, I don't know if we've addressed your concern. I mean, uh, it's a culmination thing, and uh, it's not like I wouldn't reach out to the DEC, but you have to have the documentation, the evidence, and, uh, and again, that a bear is determined to be a true uh, nuisance that raises to the level of safety concerns other than, uh, you know, documented safety concerns that they violated the protocols of uh, getting into your house or your garage or anything else. But I do also understand that they're going to analyze the situation. If you left garbage out or something like that, it kind of, kind of gives the bear an, an, an out because the fault lies with the, uh, the human. Anyway, I don't want to dismiss your concern, but... Okay. And the the other thing you. is, I mean, the other the other thing you, that is a good bear deterrent is two dogs. Uh, I have One dog is bear food, but two dogs are I, two dogs are a team. I got two dogs, but I highly recommend getting a big parrot because <laughs> the parrot detects everything within a hundred yards of the house, and that's the biggest one I have. <laughs> My parents saying we got to end this. Oh <laughs> All right. Any other public comments? Raise your hand or send a chat. I think we're done with that now. We got to move on. Okay. All I right. See where I'm Vouchers. Vouchers, do you have the numbers? Ken? I see, uh, I did get to, uh, I moved my seat, so now I'm on a hardwired computer. Uh, vouchers, I'll be making the motion. Uh, claim number 201-291-7154 through 201-291-7202. I'd like to make a motion uh, that those vouchers be audited, that have been audited by the town board and approved by a payment. Approved for payment. Do I have a second to that motion? I'll second that. Seconded by Jay. Any discussion? Okay, I'll take that as a no. I'm going to do a roll call vote. Uh, Dave McMillan? Aye. Maria May? Probably have to unmute yourself, Maria. Go ahead, Maria. Aye. Jay Wright Scott. Aye. Michelle Lindsay. Aye. And Ken English. Aye. Okay, so those vouchers are approved. Uh, according to my flow plan, we're at the ever popular tuxedo board meeting adjournment. Uh, I'd like to make a resolution. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn this meeting at 10.08. Do I have a second? Second, Dave. Seconded by Dave McMillan. Roll call vote. Dave McMillan. Aye. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry you got to say aye again. Maria May. Aye. Jay Wright Scott. Aye. Michelle Lindsay. Aye. And Kenneth Dinkus, no hesitation. Aye. Thank you very much. This meeting is now adjourned. Uh, Thanks, good guys. work, everybody. Thank you for hanging in. I'll okay. speak to you soon. Bye-bye. Okay.